Setting. Okay. Cool. Right. I'm starting three, two. What's going on? I am Nando, and I'm DJ. Uh, sorry, you guys couldn't really see because this is a podcast. But I was staring silently at you through a big orb uh, mm, that indicated yeah. that I'm Diggins because you remember me from all of your favorite podcasts. No, I, I did see that because I was in another orb, and I saw that your orb and my orb were in the same like thing, and I stared silently back because it's again podcast medium; you can't really see. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think people really loved what we just did, and yeah, uh, I do too. It's gonna be a real popular thing. So they're, they're this gonna be is so mostly nitpicking. It. A podcast where every week we pick apart a piece of pop culture by looking exclusively into details. Woo! Woo! This week, perhaps the biggest piece of pop culture of this year, I think. There's a there's a case to be made. Bold claims. I don't think it's the best or anything, but it is quite a piece of pop culture. Uh, we are indeed, as, as if you could get from what we were saying, we were going to be talking about uh, The Flash... Um, the movie that came out this year, uh, 10 years in the making or something crazy like that, it's finally I it's, out. I think it's technically even more than that, although obviously this version hasn't been that long. Right, like they do this where they go like, we're going to make a Flash movie. But like, when did they actually start doing that? Versus I, well, when is it something I, they tell their shareholders? I couldn't tell yeah, you, something man. Something they tell their shareholders, then they like start a little pre-production on one version, but that doesn't go anywhere. And then years later, technically the process never stopped, but they just start all over again. Right, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's it's wild. Then this was obviously... Well, we'll get to it. We'll get to the specifics of the movie. I do think the, like, the original release date for this movie was in 2016, I want to say. I know. the Gross. The... <laughs> factoid i know about it is i know look what look what happened no flash movie and mm. then trump so yeah. maybe they're related mm. hey. um but i know that it that this movie has been delayed for as long as the flash show has existed <laughs> like the flash show that. started and ended in the time it took to get this movie made once so that's pretty interesting but yeah we're talking about the flash um before that, you guys, incredible news of the week. My favorite news in a while, and I've been waiting for this. I'm surprised this is the first we've uh, first we've seen of it, honestly. Um, but November can't come fast enough because we saw the trailer for Craven the Hunter. Whoa! Yeah, it came out today. A couple different versions of the trailer. One's the red band version with all that big, bright red blood. And the other one is just, like, the rest of the stuff, mostly talking. Um, you guys, scale 1 to 10, how much do you love Craven in comics and movies and cartoons and stuff? Everything but this. Not movies, I guess, but yeah, comics, games, cartoons. Well, whatever. he was in uh, Spider-Verse, so you can say movies. That's true, he was. An exciting Craven, I think, is his line, right? Mm -hmm. Something like and that. And a very yeah. boring Rhino. Yeah, <laughs> which... Maybe that's a clue about something in Craven. We'll see. <laughs> I, uh, but. you know, when I was leveling up in Marvel Snap, uh, he was a real oh. uh, core part of my move deck. So, you know, I have a good, I have the cool Venom Craven variant. I love that. Uh, so, yeah, big fan of Craven in Marvel Snap. Yeah, I'm surprised he hasn't fully come back. Although maybe after 2099 gets introduced, that when the move meta is way too strong, he'll become. Viable again, but even yeah. in move decks, he's not quite essential uh, anymore, which is weird. Um, yeah, right, right. He's going to be the main villain in the new Spider-Man game, it seems like, or at least one of the main villains. Seems yeah. like he's going to be like what Mr. Negative was in the first one, where like, he's villain for the first half, and then the other villain shows up, and then it's like, that, that now. But Maybe he'll be the one to kill Peter Parker, if uh, if we think that's what's going to happen in this, uh, Something better. In this game. So <laughs> he's a menace. Peter How dare Parker you? It's not Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, I'm just against the news media and paparazzi in general, you know? Right, yeah. The, the Peter Parker's part of the fake news. So. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Craven, the, the big giant Russian hunter, um, he's just going to do what he's got to do. But mm -hmm. He's going to so, find the compromat on Peter Parker <laughs> so that he uh, can... Oh my god, you're right. He wait, is going to find the Compromot. Wait, do you think that Craven will finally surface the P-tape? <laughs> oh. Do you I think mean, 
just gonna I be mean, a scene in the in the Craven movie where he's like, oh, uh, ooh, you'll see, I I hunt with my my hands and my oh, no, brains, stop it. but also sometimes <laughs> I hunt with the traps. <laughs> <laughs> and in this particular trap, I let you have pea sex with prostitutes Stop it. in a hotel you... where I have. The... Yeah. We, are, we are five minutes into this podcast. I don't know how we're here. I thought we were going to talk about this fun, silly little Craven trailer, but no, we're de- we're back to P tape dossier. I we're back I'm to P tape dossier via Borat or something. So. <laughs> and... And also, I don't know if you watched the trailer, but Craven is a little American boy uh, who speaks with an American accent. Well, I'm, assuming, yeah. know his, love. I'm assuming his dad is the one who has the P-tape. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that That is something Russell Crowe in real life might have, honestly. Mm. He's just that kind of guy. Well, um, but I think if Russell Crowe had it, he would release it to the public because he's a hero. That's true. And he's he, great. And he would know that we all need that. Uh, so yeah, this is, well, I mean, Cra- and Craven is a villain, as we know from the mm-hmm. trailer says the word villain at least once. So mm-hmm. Craven is a hunter. He's the hunting guy. He's got a big stick. Sometimes he jumps around and throws it at Spider-Man. Um, I think if you did a poll of Spider-Man fans, comic book fans, I think a lot of them would say Craven is their favorite Spider-Man villain. Really? Yeah, yeah I do. Re- he, I think he's my favorite, hmm. honestly. Okay. I think Crave is fine. I, I he feels very middle of the road to me, honestly. Agreed. See, like I think Craven's one of the few Spider-Man villains who like can do it all. Yeah, so he's one of those villains who can be like a jobber. He can be in a team. He can do his own thing. He'd be secret good guy. And I do think Craven's Last Hunt is probably the best Spider-Man comic ever made. So I don't know. Even better than that one. Uh, alternate future story where Mary Jane died from cancer because of uh, Peter's radioactive sperm. His fluids, yeah. His fluids, I mean, yeah. That one, even better than all the ones with Paul, even better than the death of Miss Marvel or whatever. Classic Spider Man comics. Um, I like that Craven is a weirdo, right? Like, he's like a weird guy. I think that's fun about him. Okay. Like, he doesn't, he just wants to go get Spider Man. He doesn't need. To rob a bank or have revenge or anything. It's just like, oh, that Spider-Man looks so fun to kill. Let's go kill him, guys. And then he just goes and does that. He like, wants the most like, dangerous game Spider-Man, which I think he oh directly references in his first appearance. Yeah, he's going to do most dangerous game New York, too. He could get Victor Victory Suero if he wants. Oh, man. First, maybe. The ultimate prey. Oh, what if, what if the next most dangerous game is a crossover with Craven? Oh, my God. I mean, it doesn't seem like something Russell Crowe would turn down. I think I think he would do it. <laughs> wow, you think he'll do anything to keep him out of these? Yeah, he's up for whatever. Will he do any funny accent we ask of him? He'll do whatever funny accent he believes we might want. I don't even think we have to ask. I think he'll show up with his own <laughs> accent. I mean, honestly, he's I mean, the only one it... in this trailer doing the correct accent, so yeah. he deserves my, our respect. Because Craven was always a Russia boy. Yeah. Well, I so okay. There's there's being a Russian boy, and then there is this just like comically over the top musket moose and squirrel that like I don't know, man. We did, did, have you looked at a picture of comics, Craven? No, like I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. But like I don't know, maybe then Kurt Russell is the wrong, and Aaron Tyler Johnson mm. are like the wrong people for this. I, I don't know. I don't want to get into I all that. Dare but, you say Aaron, Aaron Taylor, Taylor Johnson? Is it the best people for this? He's Mando. perfect. Uh, can we have a little sidebar here? Oh, sure. Yeah. Do you think he did that on purpose? I'd like to believe he did, only because he loves Russell Crowe. I think if we start talking about Kurt Russell, sometimes he gravitates back to Russell Crowe because he's the best one. No mm-hmm. offense, Kurt Russell. But uh, I, I, th- I, I, don't, I don't think he does it, wants to take credit away from Russell Crowe in this situation. Like, his brain even subconsciously won't let him do that. Okay, you know, I'm just guess. making sure, because it's hard to tell sometimes. It is hard to tell, and yeah, we'll find right. out. We'll see if it comes back up. Okay, sidebar over. Yeah. Uh, where were we? Oh, yeah, Craven. He's Russian, like Aaron Taylor Johnson is. Remember Age of Ultron? <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh my no, gosh, he's doing it again! Is this a type no, for him now? He's not. Yeah, he's decided not to this time, I guess. He's doing Kick-Ass again or something. I don't know what voice this is, but... Do you think Aaron Taylor Johnson ever looks back on that and is like, kind of glad I didn't have to keep doing those? Um, I think he's doing pretty well money-wise. So I do think, I think the only reason I think he wouldn't do that is if he 
I was looking at his, like, you know, bank statement and like, oh, man, I could have been making all that fat, fat stacks that Paul Bettany or Jeremy Renner or whoever's character would have died in my place is making instead. So he's <laughs> well, definitely got some... I think he could have FOMO there, but yeah, he seems to be doing okay. I mean, considering Elizabeth Olsen recently did an interview where she was, like, trying to very diplomatically say, like, I'm really sick of making this stuff. I mean, fair, but also she got those fat, fat stacks of cheddar, so... Uh, you know, after you have the cheddar, sure, maybe you get a little tired of it. But during that cheddar time, it's pretty good. Pretty, it's pretty it's good. Fair. That's my th- that's my take on it. Um, Your take on it is that money is good. I do think that. Yeah, wow. I think I think I think the stars they love to be like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. But they only start talking about that after they've already gotten bazillions of dollars for making the thing. Mm, um, okay. I'm looking well, at Aaron Taylor Johnson's IMDb page. He's in Tenet. Oh my god, yeah, that's right. Is it Nocturnal Animals, which I haven't seen? I have, it's um, alright. A, mil- a Million Little Pieces, that guy who wrote the book that lied, that to Oprah, that he made a movie apparently. Um, he's the bad guy, well, spoiler alert, he's bad guy in The King's Man, remember that? Oh yeah. I thought Pedro Pascal, wait, no, I don't think no, I ever saw The King- King's Man. The King's Man, yeah, the one no, with Secret we, Hitler I, cameo. We did it, Was that That wasn't just me and Nando, was it? It could have been. It would have been maybe right around... Baby time? Yeah, well, maybe it I was. Remember when that was came it? Out. it I don't know. Been. I just I don't recall. I don't remember seeing it, but I remember everyone being mad because it like ended with Nazis or something. Like, oh god! Uh, yeah. You mean everyone loved it because it ended with Vladimir Lenin and Adolf Hitler shaking hands? Yes, because they need a strong right hand, much like Lenin's strong left hand. Oh my god! Yeah. Is it possible? I saw it, but like memory holds it completely. I mean, it's it, it's one of the more forgettable. You know Matthew Vaughn action movies. So movies ever remember. made in in this decade? Like, I mean, ugh. perhaps. By the way, yeah. uh, speaking of uh, movies being made about people who lied, did you guys see that the <laughs> Flamin' Hot Cheetos guy didn't invent Flamin' Hot Cheetos? What? what? <laughs> yeah, the guy they made the whole movie about didn't invent Flamin' Hot Cheetos. Get out of here! He's just been saying he did it for the last like twenty years. Nobody checked. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. I believe it. Is That's actually. ridiculous. Oh my gosh. I mean, live with the dream or live with the lie. Well, the thing is, the whole story is true about him being like a factory floor worker who started pitching ideas to executives, climbed his way up the ladder, became like a marketing director, uh, like super successful, et cetera, et cetera. All of that is true. But the products he pitched were like small scale variants for the Latino market in LA. Uh, that did well, but like were not flaming hot Cheetos, which are super famous and popular. So when he started telling his inspirational story for tens of thousands of dollars, he he swapped it out so that it was flaming hot Cheetos because that sounds better. That Somewhere. motherfucker. Respect, respect to him. <laughs> I want that movie now. I want them to make the movie about the man who lied about flaming hot Cheetos. And the only reason this came out is because they were making the movie. And the woman who did invent Flamin' Hot Cheetos at Frito-Lay saw, like, a news article about it and was like, wait, what? Yeah. I love that. Love that I love too. that so much. So now they can make a movie about her being the victim of this situation, too. So we can make three movies after that, like, counting the one we just made. One about the real life of the guy who lied and stuff. And then one about the woman who got it and, like, actually had to get the rights back or something. I mean, Frito-Lay owns the rights, no matter who invented it. Right. I guess I mean, like, the credit of it and, like, the love of us. Like, she should get all the money that guy got for that movie. I'm sure he's got some money. Oh, yeah. He's made tons of money off of telling this story. So she should get all of it, then. That's my take. (laughs) Roger, tell us what you think, but I think she should get all his money (laughs) and whatever stuff he bought with the money. So he should be destitute on the street They should have to... Her, they should have to like, thing. AI replace him with her in the movie. Tignataro. Was it Tignataro this time? Well, I think Tignataro could play her. Yeah. I mean, Obvi. Like, come on. Uh, she's a chameleon. Well known. Speaking of chameleon, chameleons in the Craven trailer, you guys. Probably. Uh, probably. Yeah. Um, what did you guys, what are your first impressions of the Craven trailer? Um, well, I think it looks very silly and I don't know why Sony just has to do so much Morbius porn. It's like, guys, we're doing fucking Morbius again. It's Morbid time over and over. It's Morbid time till the end of time. Get fucking ready for Morbius! I was going to say, my favorite part was when Craven 
looked at all the guys surrounding him and says, I've got a Craven, mm-hmm. uh, and then craves out all over them. Oh, God. Yeah. It's, I'd like it's, to believe that there's there's an executive in the Sony who responsible for the Spunk, uh, which is what this is called, the Sony Pictures Universe of Marvel characters, Spunk, uh, who saw all the good reviews for Spider-Man. So they has Sony finally learn their lesson the fuck we have i'm gonna <laughs> release the craven trailer tomorrow and put it all out because like they can never learn so wait, spider uh, for every spider verse we get three more bs's mm-hmm. are all that the memes right. gonna be like it's craven time is that gonna be like the hot fucking meme man i think the meme will be boys your mother is dead but <laughs> that's just the think- thing that stuck with me the most do you think we can successfully trick Sony into releasing this one place? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do, I do think that. I think this movie looks exactly like Morbius too. Like it's got all the yeah, same like, energy. It's got the same bit where he runs on a wall like a little dog. It's got <laughs> the bit where it's like he's kind of the supervillain we know, but not really. Also, will, will Russell Crowe do a sexy dance in front of a mirror? <laughs> oh, shit. I hope so. I I want to call this one out real quick i feel like that rhino shot is like the last shot of the movie i think this is one of those where like craven's been hunting this man and then he's like you know i'm the rhino and then rhino does a big roar or something and then credits i mean sounds like a good movie to me if that's true then that would be actually pretty good because then it would be just like how in spider-man 2 paul giamatti got his rhino suit and then the movie ended like it's like there's some sort of like like program subroutine built into the sony editing monster that says like if rhino becomes rhino immediately end movie uh, (laughs) it just feels like it because like there's no fucking way he's gonna fight rhino in this movie (laughs) that's just not gonna happen i don't don't know that you don't know that i know i know i'll be proven wrong if i am but that just feels like i I, think did we see craven in that scene is he wearing his big old leopard or leopard lion head thing I don't think it's ever quite a lion head the thing, but we do briefly see him wearing a big goofy vest. Oh, I mean in that scene specifically, in the rhino bit. Oh, uh, I'm not sure. I don't in think fact, so. In fact, we don't see him at all. Yeah, I think we just, we just see rhino's hand rhinoing out. Yeah, so I bet he is <laughs> in that scene and he's just wearing a humongous, like big line vest head or something it's so rhinoing that. time oh right yeah. time it's time o to rhino time yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you got yeah. it you nailed it we got mm-hmm. there <laughs> everyone stop writing it's done it's done yep. no more there's plenty of time you gotta you got five months sony because this comes out in november to get whoever the fuck that is back not paul giamatti apparently which uh, i'm uh, sorry yeah, unless that's... he didn't want to um no then reason. they should have they should have kept showing up with larger and larger dump trucks full of money until he said yes. Big or facts. they should have just gotten the computers to do his face. That's how you do a movie these days, right? <laughs> just pretend it was him. Why? Oh, that... It's pretty good. Is that a transition I hear? I maybe. Well, speaking of um speaking of computer and face and um no Paul Giamatti in this one that I know of. Um you didn't see every That's single true. bit of all of those worlds. Someone in one of them might have been watching Sideways or something like that. But we gotta talk about this week's movie, The Flash. Woo! The Flash. Um The Flash. You guys, it's finally out, directed by Andy Machete. We all know and love him from it and some other stuff probably. Um he uh the movie stars one Ezra Miller, the most exciting controversial figure in all of human history Um, (laughs) there's other people in it uh what's his name michael keaton's in there you got him playing vulture from the end of morbius uh you've got mike michael keaton's in this movie yeah wow they really kept such a tight lid on that i never would have known well because dang and i know actually i i kind of i was in the same theater with you i didn't mention it um, you kept getting up and going to the bathroom every time he would walk slowly to the camera and say one of his classic lines. So you missed all those. But that Damn. is where you kind of go, oh, that's Michael Keaton. Uh, um, okay, okay. You got him. You got Sasha Collier, the uh, Supergirl, technically in the movie. Um, Michael Shannon in a role he hates, apparently. <laughs> General Zod. Um, it's got to be other people. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck's in this. As uh, Batman. In, in a role he absolutely yep. loves? Question in his, mark? In his classic role from Air, he's playing um, <laughs> the CEO of Nike Shoes. He doesn't wear shoes. That's his whole deal. 
uh, in that uh, some, movie. Somebody else shows up early on that uh, we thought we weren't going to see again. Yep. And uh, there's a bunch of other things going on and all kinds of nonsense, which we'll get to. But as far as spoilers are concerned, I have a feeling those are the only names on the marquee. I guess that guy from the, the office space is in it as the dad. Um, I never, never learned that actor's name. And I refuse. You know what I'm talking about, right? Well, you said he played the dad, so my brain no fills in that part, at least. But do you know that actor's name? Not even a little. None of us do. It's a mystery. And it's impossible Just... to find it out. I refuse. So that guy's in there, and then the mom's probably someone famous. Don't recognize her. And then um, I, I did have somebody else who's in this. Oh, um, the, the the girlfriend, Iris, is uh, Kirstie Clemens, I think is her name. She was in the, the one from the Snyder Cut. The one with the hot dogs, yep. So, yeah, more of that. More of that the cool romance we all love. So, you guys, we got to start with the wheel. No, wait, not wheel. Sorry, game. Game, then wheel. <laughs> also, no wheel. So, start with the game. <laughs> DJ. In solidarity with the writer's strike, we are not doing the one bit of writing for this movie, for our That's podcast, right. which is The Wheel. DJ, you are the IMDb-sman this week. I cannot wait to hear where this comes I, from. I thought you were going to say, I cannot believe because of the Scorpinox thing, but you know, it's oh, yeah, cool. It's Diggins is our best person. <laughs> Absolutely still bullshit. Um, okay, so where does this come from? So, um, uh, let's see. I have to not do a multiverse thing. Like, not do, like, obviously there's no multiverse thing because Spider-Verse was that one. So this one's, oh, okay. I know what this one is. So, um, <laughs> IMDb, we do a game called the IMDb Bees and Spelling Bee where we have to figure out what um, the IMDb summary is uh, that is written by uh, the people at IMDb.com. And what they do is, so... Every time that there is a movie that is made, um, IMDb captures like one of the writers who was like one of the big writers on it. And what they do is they basically say, hey, we're going to go back in time and kill your mother and frame your dad for it unless you write us a summary for this movie you're a part of. And then they're like, oh my God, okay, okay, don't kill my mom and frame my dad. And then they fancifully write the summary. And then if it's good, they're like, all right, everything's cool. And then if it's not good... They strap him into a chair and they make him watch uh, the the Justice League, but not the Snyder Cut one. The other one, the one that we decided we all hate, uh, and they have to watch that um, until they die, and that's how they die. So if they don't write a good IMDb summary, they die. Um, I will tell you this, guys. This summary, the guy probably got to live. Maybe he lived halfway. Maybe after like sixty hours of watching Justice League, they're like, "All right, let him go. He's learned his lesson." Like, I think it's like okay, but definitely could be better. Okay, is what uh, I think well, of the summary. As the loser, because of the Scorpionic bullshit. <laughs> Uh, because of the because Nando is the loser that everyone agreed on and thought was completely fair and correct. Sure, uh, I will respect the ruling of Roger. Um, so you know, I'll let it go. I mean, time. you have to. Damn it, you don't have a choice. This is mostly nitpicking. That's true. I'll pack the the court and get my. Yeah. Yeah, you keep saying yeah. that, buddy. Okay. I'm going to appeal to that one district in Texas that lets you do whatever you want. <laughs> don't let him let realize. Do it. The fragile norms that protect our institutions and that he could simply ignore it if he wanted to. <laughs> exactly. So, Diggins, I will let you go first. I have actually what I think is a pretty good one written down, but I want I don't want you to be able to steal it. Damn. I was, too, yeah. I was totally going to steal it. It's pretty good. Because I love to cheat. Um, okay. Uh, after traveling back in time to save his mom, the Flesh discovers or or Barry Allen uh discovers that uh his actions have uh have changed the have changed the universe uh he must team up with some new friends to stop reality from unraveling man you got a lot of the things that have on this paper but not all of them. So, and I didn't even know what the paper was. Yeah, I do think if the IMDb summary is good, we do. I think we're getting good at this kind of knowing what it's supposed to be. It's the when the IMDb summary is bad, that's where it gets all screwy. Um, okay, um, I'm gonna say after Barry Allen, aka the Flash, travels back in time to save his mother, uh, he discovers that unintended consequences have. Thrown the multiverse into chaos. He must team up with a younger version of himself, a retired Batman, and an unfamiliar Kryptonian to 
stop General Zod and save all reality. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Nah, nah, neither, neither of you, neither of you got oh it. Oh my god, incredible! Oh, what an upset! What is the tiebreaker? Well, do you have a tiebreaker? I mean, I was, I had a feeling that this wasn't gonna go well, so I started like, oh, maybe I, uh, all right, so I, I have a couple. I have a really niche one, and then I have, okay, all right, I, I know what I want to do. We haven't done one of these in a while, where I want you to pick out a thing from the summary, because these are the kinds of ones I like. Oh, okay. Um, because you guys, like, totally miss it. Okay, so there is a, what I'll say, a phrase in the summary that is like, it is like something the Flash is doing, but it's kind of like a cliche, like, to the flash but it's like okay okay i got it but oh uh all right diggins go for it race against time ah uh, no but am Ned, i on the right am i on the do i have the right idea you do okay which i don't know if that um, gives nando a an edge here but go ahead nando well i just meant like did i understand the prompt you did and yes yes okay so i'm okay. gonna go to nando what was the word you said dj you said it was a. Uh... It's a phrase. A phrase. Yeah. Um. Like, I, I, like I'm kind of drawing a blank because I was gonna say that thing, and you said, "What did Diggins say?" I said, "Race against time." Yeah. Um. T- Diggins might get this if you give him the opportunity, Nando. He might Scorpinox you. I mean, it's yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say it's a phrase usually associated with the Flash. I I'm just saying it makes sense for the Flash. Like, so it's like a well-worn cliche that. Oh, when you think okay. of guy who runs faster, like that makes sense. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass by saying, gotta go <laughs> fast. Is that Diggins? it? No, Diggins. <laughs> I need to think no. on this for a little bit. I have a joke one that I could say, <laughs> but I feel like I should do a real one first. Probably. I mean, listen, if you do a joke one, I'll probably also have to do a joke one. I still haven't figured one out. Here, how about this? I promise I'll do a joke one next. Okay. Uh, Time in a bottle. (laughs) No. Oh. How about Back to the Future? No. (laughs) Okay. Now we're we're back to real ones. Okay. Um, hmm. A well-worn cliche. It's not race against time. Uh, I've got one now that I don't hate. I still don't love it, though. Does it say that he has to do something in a flash? No. Oh, that was what I was gonna say. I was gonna Is say really? back in a flash. Yeah, but um, okay. So not in a flash. Um, it's a race against time. I feel like Here, Nando, you guess, and then I'm gonna give the bookend, so that if you guys don't get this, I'll go somewhere else. I really okay. thought Dickens was gonna get it. I, I'll I'll say you like underestimated Barry's, how stupid I am. Barry's gotta run. Is that it? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> There's <It's> way too <laughs> much pause there. Sorry. I didn't realize that was your... He, he, he yes. thought there would be more. He was yeah. like, that's surely that wasn't it. Yeah. Surely. <laughs> well, he was just saying words. All right, so here's what I do. I'm going to do the... Uh, I'm going to go phrase, 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 blank, phrase, phrase, phrase. And then I'm going to say go, just whoever gets it first. Up for grabs, family feud style, All right. okay. fast money. Okay, so the clause is forcing... And the blank is a phrase. It's not a word. It's It's a phrase. Forcing him to blank in order to save the future. Go. Uh, I did race, not think this change the past. the past. No, no. I, save the world. <laughs> save the cheerleader. Save reality. All right, all right, all right. It's all right. We're, we're done. It was race for his life. Race okay. for his life. I mean, like, I, it's I not thought, a real phrase, but I get it. I can like, see. I don't know. I, I don't like, know. I, right. I understand. It's a phrase. It just doesn't feel like a phrase that... It w- it's not a phrase that I'd be like, DJ was really raised for his life today, huh? You know, that's <laughs> like... it's not, Even if you were Flash, I'd be like, that's a little weird. That's, that doesn't quite work, Batman. He's still a phrase for his life. Okay. Right. Want to watch work that phrase out again? New, 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 new game. New game. New game. Um, I right. can think the, of a fun game, but it's I would, it would be unfair to the, do. The, this is a two. This is a, this is a two parter. Uh, it, it's like a question then with like a bonus. It's like trivia. I'm gonna have like a cool scoring matrix. All right, I want you to give me the top four billing as per IMDb, and then tell me where like what number Michael Shannon's at. Spoiler: Michael Shannon's not in the top four, but that's okay. probably not a shocker. As long as you give me the billing in order, and then where Michael Shannon is. Well, no, he wasn't the shocker. He was General Zod. Right. My bad. Um. So Diggins, I think you have to go first by our weird rules or whatever. 
Okay, okay, okay. In order, Ezra Miller, Michael Keaton, uh, Ben Affleck, hmm, I guess Sasha Kaye. Okay. And then Michael Shannon is number seven. Okay. Man, all of those is what I was going to say. So, <laughs> wait, okay, here we go. So, DJ, did he get it 100% right? Like, am I allowed to say? I mean, if he did, then if I did, just say I yes or no. Did I get it a hundred percent right? No. Okay. Okay. So then, okay. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna change it slightly. Um, like I don't think Michael Keaton could have top billing. It just doesn't seem plausible. Uh, so I'm just gonna switch a couple. Ezra Miller, Michael Keaton, Sasha Kaye, Kaye, uh, Ben Affleck. It's kind of got to be Ben Affleck next. Um, and then I'm gonna say Michael Shannon's like. I mean, like, billing on this is insane, because how do you bill, you know, <laughs> old videos of guys? But I'm going to say, like, 10 or something. Um, okay, uh, it, it pains me, but Diggins is the winner. How? <laughs> um, well, if you want to know how, he, he, he got it with General Zod as the Mike, Michael Shan is 7, unfortunately. Were Mando. we both wrong about and the order of guys? Yeah, and you weren't like right enough to. Um, okay, so it's this is probably gonna blow your minds. It's Sasha Kai, Kai, whatever. Ezra Miller, Ben Affleck, Michael Keaton. What? Uh, I yeah. don't believe that. I, <laughs> I like. Again, this is the IMDb and it's not like, billing. Yeah, and it, it's not like it cast in order. It's just, and it's not like alphabetical order. It's just IMDb's order. This order is like. <laughs> are you are you looking? at yeah, I'm looking now. it up because it's <laughs> here. Diggins, it's will give you a life insane here. where some of these guys I, show I up. I got on it. it. <laughs> Sasha Sasha Kaye is first. Like, but why? <laughs> wow, because no. she's and doing all the fifth, press. Fifth is Antia Trowel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Feora. before Michael Shannon. <laughs> I don't even think she had lines. It's, this is Helen so Slater, <laughs> who only shows up via archival footage, is before Michael Shannon. <laughs> They're both before either of the parents <laughs> and Alfred. <laughs> this doesn't make That's any true. sense. Like, and honestly, for that reason, I think it makes for a pretty good tiebreaker. It's a horrible but, tiebreaker no, for that reason. But also, like, and then if you had said like Ezra Miller, then Ben Affleck, but you went Ezra Miller by Uncle Keaton, just like Dickens did. So this is all I could do. The only I, thing that makes sense. If you had told me, oh, by the way, it's a nonsense order. Just pick random characters. I'm, I'm, I'm done that. <laughs> but like, well, like, it's the billing order. So of course, I'm going to name them in order of which one should be billed higher than the other. Doesn't <laughs> make any sense. Oh my god, right. it's terrible. Well, let me get this out here's of the way. What, here's what my tiebreaker was going to be if I was okay. in charge. I'm sorry. I would have just, there's six people that were on the hook to direct this movie that eventually like uh, left and gave the position to Andy Machete. Who are those six people? Oh, would have gone rapid or, fire through them. Rapid fire like back and forth until someone can't name one. Yeah. I can name maybe three. Um, I uh, I feel like I could I could pull one out maybe, but that's it. Who, who would yours be? Um, see, I feel like I know. I knew that fact. And I've mm -hmm. read the names before, and so I'm like, I feel like if I was under a high pressure situation, I could remember one of them. Yeah. Uh, let me. There were some, me... some pretty big names attached to direct this thing, right? Oh yeah, ones that are super relevant now. Like I'm pretty sure I'll just say it because I know some of them. I'm pretty sure Miller and Lord were at one point the directors of yes! this movie. Oh yes, my gosh. Right. I also think Robert Zemeckis was at one point attached to direct this movie. That was Zemeckis. And um, the other one I know is I'm well, pretty sure Rick Famuyiwa was also going to direct this movie. Um, I think, given uh, one thing about this movie that I will mention later, it would make a lot of sense to have Robert Zemeckis direct this movie. Exactly. And like, yeah, there were a bunch of. Oh, apparently, John Francis Daly was going to direct this movie. One of the directors who did what you call it, um, fucking Dungeons and Dragons. Was also oh, on the hook for this. This is insane. So it happens when it takes fifteen years to make your movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I could defend my terrible position, uh, one, the tiebreaker is in effect for when no one gets the summary right. So if you get the summary right, then you don't have to worry about the tiebreaker. Um, uh, DJ, I think I think you'll find that uh, everyone agrees that this is just and fair. Absolutely. Uh, and that only Nando is complaining because he lost. I mean, I feel I mean, bad. Nando's on like a four-week losing streak or something I mean, like just, that. What I is don't... the point of the tiebreaker? If not, 
you know, what you could make. I'll do it next time. It'll just be what number am I thinking of making an arbitrary <laughs> no, I, thing? Listen, Diggins, Diggins, Diggins said Michael Shannon seven. Diggins was able to intuit that oh. Michael Shannon was, you know, placed seventh on this bizarre <laughs> billing order by IMDb.com. Also, we know the history of IMDb. We know that it's just totally random bullshit. So maybe if we're guessing things off IMDb, just like throw stuff into the air. Um, I apologize for nothing, uh, even though I feel bad. Diggins is the best, obviously. That's uh, true. I'm, I'm going to read this summary, and then I don't yeah, have to I, worry about this anymore. I am so curious what uh, it says. Yeah. Barry Allen uses his super speed to change the past, but his attempt to save his family creates a world without superheroes, forcing him to race for his life in order to save the future. So, you guys got, like, he went back in time, and he... It, changed his thing with his mom but world without superheroes that would have been uh, big and like it's 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 a fine summary it would it would have been hard to get that since it's literally not true i mean it's no i think it's like middle of the road like i said right it's like it's not good but it's not horribly wrong yeah like i think it's technically true it's just like not a great summary of this movie like it's definitely not how the movie is sold uh, I mean, it is almost how it's sold in one of the trailers, where the Flash goes, I made a world without superheroes. Oh, sure. I guess I just mean leaving out Batman as, like, an element oh, of sure. this is insane. Yeah. And that's why I was like, well, it has to have his, him in it, or some reference to, you know, a batting gentleman, as it were, but apparently not. I just want to know why Ezra Miller was billed second. I mean, I Probably. do think, okay. Probably because of all the stuff. No, because I, I think it has, because, it, okay, so it can't be... This sometimes I think IMDb does this based off of like how many people look at profiles. I, I'm pretty sure I saw like I've heard someone talk about this, I don't remember who, that like if your profile is being looked at a lot that week, then you just rise up in this shit because it's somewhat arbitrary. Um, and like for a reason I don't quite understand, people have really grabbed onto Sasha Kaye here and like it has become kind of the meme part of I guess you need something, any port in a storm. But, like, <laughs> that has become the thing that people are like, oh, amazing, incredible. So I guess that, like, TikTok, maybe, is responsible. Wait, I, I want to go back. But then, like, why is Feyora 5? I, that doesn't help. Like, that doesn't make the theory make sense. So, wait, I, 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 feel, I feel bad that I came up with this late, but I'm, I'm made sympathetic by Nando's appeal. And I think I have a tiebreaker that I, I think if Diggins can't get it and Nando can, maybe Nando deserves to win, even though Diggins wow, will hardly disagree. Wow, wow, hold on. Oh, we can't, we can't no. go back on what we said. <laughs> Diggins, I'm convinced you would get this question, though. Like, it, it, you're, you would be favored, like, two to one, I think, to get this, because of how you remember wow. things. I'm, but I think it's a good trivia question. I mean, I'd love to take another shot at it, All right. because... I want to hear the question, I lost, but I don't accept so. the legitimacy okay, of this Okay, fine. Cork. My question would have been, because I was like Googling Flash, it's like, oh, I think this would be good. What is the name of the sandwich that Barry orders at the beginning of the movie from the coffee shop? You could either give me the acronym, or you could give me the, like, whole thing. Oh, my God. It's like banana, peanut butter, honey, or something. Yeah. I want to say pickles do, might be involved. Do, do, wait, do not... Do, all right, do you guys want to take a stab for realsies? Because this is a good trivia question. It's actually about the movie. Like, I mean, we but, both just kind of gave our guesses. Is there banana, more? I mean, peanut butter, honey, and nuts, I want to say. I'm going to say... Nando? Yeah, so it's it's, it's got to be... It's it's like... The acronym is like PBJ&J or something like that. But it's like... So it's like peanut butter, jelly, honey. I know honey is in there. You're right. Olives maybe are also in there or something like There's a small thing that he's placed. Raisins? Dates? I, what what yeah. else? All right. People- you're... Well, I guess you're both wrong. You guys got everything but one element, so it's it's fine. Diggins wins because what was it? Raisins. It's raisins. It's there. There is another thing besides raisins. It's P B N B R H C. Mm. Peanut butter and bananas, raisins, honey, and cheese. Oh. oh. Uh, can I just say, uh, sounds vile. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're him, right? It's is are his like taste buds jacked up to eleven though? So it's like it's probably great. I think I mean, the thing is that that's a lot of like protein and energy. I think. Yeah, no, I know, yeah. but but also it wouldn't taste vile because his taste buds are jacked up to eleven. Is is what I I get why it's all protein, but it probably doesn't taste vile to him. If anything, it would taste vile for longer because you would perceive it slower. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's true. <laughs> it would just be like eating it for a day and being like, this is the worst thing I've ever eaten. But I mean, maybe he's just, I mean, he's just a weirdo as we, as we find out over the course of the movie. All no, right. Well, not all there. I, uh, I ran out of trivia and, uh, Nando, you couldn't get the sandwich. So Diggins I mean, wins. I mean, that's a, that's a fine trivia question. I'll admit. Thank you. That, Thank that you. is a Thank good, you. 
good trivia question. Not as good as mine, but good. And that's um, fair. That's fair. That that is acceptable. I mean, I feel like there were so many weird little references to things. Is that like there's got to be some trivia that's like this thing is referenced with this fucking thing. I, I mean, I'm sure, but we've been doing this for like 47 minutes at this point. I know that's like... true. <laughs> Nando, you just have to accept that uh, the universe is telling you that you're bad. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's only one thing you can do about that is go back in time and yeah. oh. fuck, fuck it up. So, <laughs> Oh my god, you're going to kill you. Diggins or me or whoever wronged you? Please, the sweet I'm release just, of death I crave. I'm just going to move a, something in your fridge or something, you know? Like to, oh, to affect sure. the yeah. world that ch- changes where you're going and stuff. Um, okay. So I have to do the thing. Mm-hmm. You got to summarize this movie. Yeah. Okay. Not an impossible task. No, I, I think this movie, the summary is, it doesn't make oh. a lot of sense, but it is but, but also, somewhat there's, comprehensive. There's so few things that happen, so it's not that hard. That's, That's true. Right. You did a very yeah. easy job. Exactly. Um, okay. So The Flash, Barry Allen is ordering sandwiches and stuff, living his life. He has to save a hospital, collapsing hospital as part of a whole big thing. There's a big, big explosion thing happening. He's got to save a bunch of babies. He does that. Uh, we learn that he hangs out with Batman. Okay, so here's some some spoilers for, like, cameos and stuff. They'll start now. Uh, in Wonder Woman, briefly, and they do bits from other, gar- like, uh, Justice League movies, but again. And then they go, by the way, I'm Barry Allen, and I got to go because my dad's going to jail or something. Uh, and he's got another appeal. So Barry is still a forensic investigator trying to learn... The seek to like learn enough about forensic investigating to clear his dad's name for murder his dad seemed to not have committed. Although in the comics it's different sometimes, or like it doesn't. We never get much information about the murder itself. Um, sometimes it's more no. interesting a, than other times. He's a weird lack of interest in yeah. what actually happened. <laughs> it's it's strange. Um, but then so he's like so. He tries to find information about his dad. He has fancy Wayne tech that's going to decode the signal or something so that he can maybe prove that his dad wasn't there when his mom got stabbed. Uh, even though, I don't know, whatever. He does that, and it doesn't work. But then he gets mad. It runs real fast. And he goes into the Coliseum of Faces and stuff. And that is, I guess, the <laughs> Speed Force or Time Zone or whatever. And he's in there. And, like, he finds... And he runs back to earlier that day. And... Barry discovers that he has the ability to go forward and backward, and I guess backward mostly, in time. Well, we, um, we never see him travel forward in time. Yeah. But well, we see him travel forward in time throughout the whole movie. <laughs> Every yes. second you're watching him on screen, except for the ones where he's traveling back in time, he's traveling forward in time. Okay, we never see him travel forward in time faster than the normal uh, speed at which all people travel forward in time. That's true. That is correct. Um, so, he goes... Uh, so he's like, hey, Batman, I'm going to go save my mom. I can do that. It's really easy. Batman's like, no, 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 Barry. It's good to be sad. Also, if you do this, it might fuck up everything. It might destroy the whole multiverse. And Barry says, I'm pretty sure we did this once already, and it was fine. And Batman's like, I don't remember if this counts or not, so let's just pretend <laughs> that the answer is you can't. No one, no one's quite sure what does and doesn't count. It's incredible. So and, the goes, Flash, and the Flash is like, what are you talking about, Batman? It was the most cheer-worthy moment ever, <laughs> according to the Oscars voters. It was, yeah. This is word, worthy, worthy stuff. Um, better than Matrix. So he goes and does this plan to go back in time. Uh, he goes home and just like goes immediately goes there to like see his mom and stuff, and it works. Um, and then he finds out that his past self is there. A college-aged version of him um, who, because he got to grow up with two loving parents, is a whole piece of shit. And <laughs> that means, I guess, that he he's kind of like, I wouldn't say he's quite a stoner because you don't see him, like, smoke weed. But he does everything else you would expect a stoner to do. So if you're wondering what this, what this Barry is, it's pretty much that. Um, so Barry's like, listen... I'm also, he accidentally also seems to travel to the day he got his super speed by being struck by lightning in your chemicals. So he's like, does a little bit of shenanigans with his past self. And then he's like, oh shit, we got to go get you super speed. Otherwise that'll be bad. So he goes and does that, but accidentally Barry gets super speed. But because he gets struck by the lightning a second time, his super speed gets destroyed. So 
Now, young Barry, baby Barry, has super speed, and he does not. So that's a whole lot of shenanigans there. And then he discovers that he's actually not in his universe. Uh, in the past, he's in a different universe because of branching multiverse bullshit stuff. Um, fulcrum points. That's how they explain it in this. Uh, and this universe has no superheroes, like we're saying. So, and General Zod's going to show up. This is also the day of that. Barry Allen got his superpowers the day before General Zod showed up. Cool. Uh, we also learned he was at that. But it doesn't matter. So mm-hmm. we've slowly like, learned that everybody was there. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Just off screen laughing too. Yes. And the <laughs> so then Barry's like, okay, I'm gonna call all the Justice Leagues, uh, and he tries to call them, but they're all either don't exist or are living happy lives as football players or whatever it is they do. Yeah. So then he's like, oh, Batman. That, someone says Batman, or he says Batman, and someone's like, oh no, that guy's real though. So then Barry's like, oh, cool, I'll just go to see him. And then they go see Batman. Batman has retired. He is a, he's wearing like a little homeless wig, kind of like that. Not homeless, but like he's wearing like what you would expect to see if you went to like like a community theater production where one of the characters was a homeless man. Like that, that kind of get up. And he's like in his place, being all sad. And then he tells them that there's different timelines and also that he's Batman. And they're like, help us. And he's like, no. And they're like, please. And he's like, okay. But also... <laughs> it will, will be a recurring theme in this movie. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> he goes and does his little speech. He does his little line from the first one. And it's Michael Keaton, but it's, and it technically is the one from the Tim Burton movies. But, like, it's not. But, like, it is. So that's what they're going for. He, um, he knows that there is a super something or other, because if they're able to find a satellite that crashed or some something something... Uh, in Russia, so we're also doing Superman Red Sun, I guess, kind of, but like, eh, not really, not yeah, it, not really. Well, it's like, because in I'm pretty sure in the original Flashpoint, the arm, the American army has Superman. Yes, that is. But correct. in this, for some reason, it's Russia, and it's that well, same kind of like we can't have a movie that portrays the American military as being even remotely somewhat the, like bad guys. Big that's a facts. Very good point. Big facts. Um, so they go to Russia, and then they try to break out uh, Superman from prison. Uh, Barry's using his powers, kind of dumb. Batman's invulnerable and pretty cool. And, uh, you know, the most spry 71-year-old man you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> then they find Superman, but oh wait, it's a girl? A uh, woman, I guess, younger. Do they call her Supergirl in this? I think they actually call her Superwoman. They go do woman. Okay. Yeah. So it's Superwoman. So it's a woman, and she's like, "I'm not Clark. I'm Kara Zor-El. I'm a different guy." And um, so then she's like, "Ah, oh, that sucks, man. You guys got a whole thing with Super General Zod, but it's fine. Bye." She leaves, and then she goes and watches Zod. Uh, kill some guys, and then she's like, "Oh, I didn't realize Zod was killing guys." Then she comes back. And she's like, "Actually, I am friends with you guys now." Yeah, she's Barry, like, "I knew Zod was going to destroy the planet, but now that he's killing guys, that's too far." Yeah, he's crossed the line. Uh, Barry at this point has also been chatting with Bruce about the thing that he's not supposed to tell past timeline Barry, which is that they he is actually in the past to save his mother um, because his mother is dead, and he doesn't want to upset past timeline Barry. But past timeline Barry hears that. Um, and is like, that sucks. Past Timeline Barry uh, also sucks at super speed, so regular Barry's like, let's just give me super speed. If you electrocute me enough, that'll probably work. They try that a couple times, it does. They, they do the exact same scene from fucking Flashpoint, where Supergirl comes and picks him up and puts him in the lightning, and then he gets superpowers again. Uh, Flash makes a costume out of a bat suit, and then all four of them, Flash, Flash, Batman, and Superwoman, go to the thing. Go to do uh, a big fight in the desert against... They go to do the end of uh, Man, Man of Steel. They go to do the end of Man of Steel that the internet wanted them to do, but like that, that we always complain Superman didn't do. Um, this is what we get for complaining, and we're sorry. We shouldn't have complained. <laughs> a big, empty, featureless, formless void um, made of brown. So they do a big fight there. They start killing guys. Oh, yeah. I didn't explain this part. This is pretty important, although it's so tiny. It's such a... I think it's so funny how quickly it's glossed over. When Barry is time traveling, he notices a fucking demon in the middle of the time traveling. And it's kind of got purple lightning or something, and it's about as big as him and whatever. Let's not look into that at all. 
So then Barry, they go start fighting Zod's guys. And Zod's guys are Kryptonian, so like, it's not easy. But they're still pretty good because they have super lightning powers and all kinds of stuff. They invent little Kamehameha move for fucking what's... Well, not Kamehameha. <laughs> I guess it's like Piccolo. Um, but like, they, they have all kinds of little moves they do, the flashes, to kill Zod guys. Batman is in the Bat plane, Bat wing, uh, fight, dog fighting against these Kryptonian ships and uh, Supergirl is fighting against Zod. And then at a critical point in the fight, Zod kills Supergirl because it's, because it, I love how Zod explains. It's like, and by the way, General, or, um, you know, whatever his name is, uh, not a general. What's, um, uh, Zor, or not Jor-El, it's like a scientist, I guess, right? Jor-El, scientist Jor-El, used mm-hmm. the, the, Kryptonian matrix and put it in the baby so that's what we needed to jumpstart our civilization the baby is dead so also it we need you and your blood so now Kara's super blood is what they're going to harvest and they get her and they kill her and they harvest her blood and then they bury and them lose the fight and then Batman fucking kamikaze dive bombs into one of the ships and explodes because they're like it's shielded and he doesn't know that even though he's shot at it already I assume or not I guess it doesn't matter so then they're like, oh shit, we fucked this up. Let's go back in time again and fix it. I don't even know if Barry wants to do that originally, but definitely young Barry does because young Barry's getting a little antsy. So they go back in time, try it again. In a different sit- like, like chain of events, all the same things happen. And it seems clear, kind of based on what, what um, Barry's always understood about time travel. I don't remember if anyone says this, but like certain things can't be changed. This is one of them. This world has to die. Uh, and get eaten by Zod and terraformed, I guess, and destroyed. And Barry is fine with that because he's learned the lesson of the movie. But young Barry has not, so he keeps trying to fix everything. And also, he gets fucking, like, like Mortal Kombat. Like, he turns into Baraka and gets big pieces of metal <laughs> jacking out of his body and stuff. And every time he does it, Barry's like, yeah, big piece of metal out of your body. He's like, whatever, it doesn't matter. So... Then Barry goes into Speed Force. Young Barry goes into Speed Force. Regular Barry goes into Speed Force. They have a little bit of fight or something. And young Barry keeps going in and out of the Speed Force with more and more bits of spiky metal. Then the big demon that they all forgot about comes back. And then it and it is revealed. And this is ki- I'm kind of a little confused about all of this. So I only only motivations I guess. It is revealed that that is a Barry Allen from mm-hmm. yep. the far. It's Buzz Lightyear. We're doing the end of Lightyear again. So a, a version of the hero from the far future who has kept trying to reset the timeline by fixing his one mistake. Uh, he's driven him insane, but he seems to know that. And yeah. also he's like, oh, also I couldn't hear a fucking word this character was saying, but like, he's like, I am you and I'm from the pat from just keeping doing this for millions and millions and billions of years. And I think this thing so we'll call this one Dark Flash, I think is what we're calling this online, thinks that killing Barry, this Barry will fix everything. So he's about to kill this Barry, but then young Barry shows up and dies in his place, and then both of them die. So I guess it was young Barry in this whole time? Yeah, it was yeah. Young, young Barry kept doing the thing that we see him doing over and over again for so long that he turned old, became right. this Barry. But this Barry also is the reason, like, he also is like, I knew that you were... Like, I'm the one who forced you out at that exact moment so you could create me. Right. But that doesn't make any sense because changing time changes, like, the universe in this setting. So how come when he changes time that doesn't do anything and it still makes him? Uh, But then also, unlike anything else we see, yeah, he he accidentally kills young Barry and that just makes him explode in a puff of logic. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And that's not how time... Nothing about this character is how time travel has worked in the rest of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. And we or any of the previous DCEU movies. Yeah. The other one that had time travel that was just like this. But the... Uh, so then, we haven't really talked about this. This this weird coliseum of faces and like... You know, oh my god. Shadowy faces is, on, is but one of a vast number of six or seven multiverses <laughs> which is like big glowing orbs full of like little clips of the old movies and you see our one we're in that barry's in when he's running and then you're able to see some of the other ones and we'll get to who's in them it doesn't really matter but they're crashing into each other and then the lesson barry has to tell barry is like that's like oh don't if you 
keep trying to do this. It'll kill everybody, so don't. And then Barry reverses time again, goes back to the night his mother is killed again, takes the tomato sauce, which we haven't really talked about, but that's the mechanism he's going to use to save her because she because dad leaves to get tomato sauce that she doesn't have and takes it out of her cart, so undoes the thing that he did to fix the timeline. However, and this really fucking threw me in the moment, and it continues to, to this very day, he puts the tomato sauce up on the thing, so when dad has to come back and get it, he looks up at the camera so he doesn't have to go to jail, and apparently, according to the director, that creates a new timeline, which is the Clooneyverse now. So, Barry is not in the first timeline he was in, or the new timeline, he is now in this separate timeline that's different, and for some reason, he doesn't care. And that's the end it's- of the movie. Him and Aquaman get drunk, and Aquaman falls over and dies in a puddle, much <laughs> like the uh, Chris <laughs> Rock joke from Stand Up from years ago. And then, uh, I feel like there's two post credits scenes. I can't remember what the second one is. No, it's just one. Oh, it's just the it's one? It's just the one. Yeah. I guess the Clooney thing feels like a post credit scene. It um, does. does. Yeah. Uh I think that's everything. Obviously, we'll get to cameos and like, yeah, the tomato soup's a big part of it. Um, Barry hugs his mommy like in the Adam Project, and that's pretty much it. Uh, that's that's all I got. That's the good. That's the explanation of it. Good job, Nando. But I'm very proud. Thank you, thank you, Diggins. As the person who won, you well, yes. you won that tiebreaker. Won. Undisputedly, sure. uh, unquestionably, everyone agrees I won. Uh huh. Exactly. Uh, what did you think of 2023's The Flash? So it's interesting. Um, in in very in the in the multiverse, as this movie uh, posits, there are there are like inevitable intersection points, things that will always happen. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, this and what's interesting about that is there there's kind of proof of that here in our very own universe. Uh, for example, when you go, when you set out to make a live action movie about the multiverse, like say <laughs> Doctor Strange or this one, uh, it seems there's inevitable patterns, no matter how tortured the production is, that will always occur. For example, the beginning will be kind of interesting and the ending will have some cool stuff uh, and the whole movie will promise like vivid imagination and endless possibility. And yet the middle will be a vast wasteland of doing things that are only <laughs> slightly different from the things we've been doing the whole time and also nothing interesting happens there uh which is truly incredible that two movies with made in such different circumstances in such different ways can end up so similar by two horror movie directors too yeah andy mm-hmm. machete and sam raimi uh Classic. the major the only major difference being that at least the villain in dr strange is kind of fun <laughs> uh you mean yeah. black agar boltagon keeper of the terrigen mists and king of the inhumans yes that's exactly who i'm talking about need more of him in this mm-hmm uh, which is to say, okay, listen, is this movie the absolute total disaster I thought it would be? Yes. Well, not really. <laughs> you sounded different there for a second, Diggins. <laughs> Your microphone got worse, too. I don't know what it was. What? Uh, it's not It's uh, not the worst one of these DC movies we've ever seen, uh, which is an extremely low bar, but I'll give it that. Honestly, there's some stuff in this movie I even like. Like, there's some decent stuff that happens in this movie. But it's so long and so full <laughs> of things I couldn't possibly care less about. Uh, like, if this was a 20-minute movie that was just the beginning and the end, I'd be like, you know what? That was pretty good. Uh, but that whole two hours is nothing. Vast wastelands of nothing. Uh, and also, it is a bunch of weird stuff in it that Nando alluded to and we'll talk more about that I don't really like. Uh, the thing towards the end that Nando glossed over that we'll talk about more is one of the most ghoulish things I've ever seen put to film. <laughs> so I hated that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's not a good movie. You, it, it's like, if you, if you were like, oh, everyone's saying it's not the total disaster, maybe I should watch it. No, it's still not worth your time. It's just like, I can imagine a worse movie than this. Uh, also, it's really funny that this came out right after Spider-Verse, where Spider-Verse is all like, you don't have, like, your trauma is not an essential part of you. You, uh, you know, things are not inevitable. You do not have to suffer to be good. And this movie's like, no, no, you do, though. No, they are. It's bizarre. (laughs) Like, it's, it's the complete opposite. It's incredible. It really is. Uh, I will say, I, I, well, I, 
I don't I like the Spider-Verse message more. I do think the ending emotional bit of it delivering that message at least kind of worked for me. Where like the goodbye scene with the mom is like, all right, this is something. Um but yeah, no, everything else is nonsense. And I didn't like it. And also uh, you know, I'm not plugged in enough to know this. I have to imagine the Snyder people love this movie. Uh, You'd be surprised. <laughs> well, hold on. Let me let me state my reasoning. I imagine the Snyder people love this movie because it 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 establishes as immutable, like time travel proof, uh, like always forever true fact in the DC universe that a woman Superman is worse than a man Superman. Oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. How dare you? What do you mean, how dare you? It's what the movie says. <laughs> uh, oh, God. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's it's better than I expected, but worse than I'd hoped. That's my mm. review. Um, what about you, Dando? What did you think? Listen, as the as everyone's favorite person, uh, the star of Top Gun Maverick and um, whatever else, Mummy wants three, four, the fourth Mummy movie, if you don't count all the originals, uh, he believes that this is the greatest superhero movie ever made. Right. I could not figure this out <laughs> until I learned this week that he is apparently maybe in the Green Lantern show, and now I get it. Like, oh. I understood Stephen King because I'm like, oh, this guy directed it. Like, Stephen King likes him, and, like, that's what this is. Like, I, I totally made sense to me. And I can even see, like, like, I think I'm a little bit more positive on this than Dickens. I think this movie has parts that work. Um, as like a thing. And if you've never seen a superhero movie before, or you hate a lot of them, but you have a reason to like this one, like Stephen King, and then I, I can see kind of enjoying it. Um, the Tom Cruise thing just blew my mind, but I think that set uh, what we knew at the time were unreasonably high expectations for like, we knew it couldn't be the greatest superhero movie I've ever made. Um, just because it could, but like then the, the like, Next, like, bevy of reviews were like, listen, it's okay. And I think, like, I think that ended up helping it. Because it's not the worst superhero movie ever made. It's not the best superhero movie ever made. It does feel like a very average one from back in the day. Like a Spider-Man 3 or something like that. Um, with a lot more going on for it, to, like, and a lot more different problems. But, like, as far as, like, the beginning I loved, and I was honestly a little angry that the movie wasn't that the middle i actually kind of liked i thought most of that was fun i understand that it doesn't matter and like it's it is just kind of bumping around but at least it was kind of well put together and like it i i found a lot of the bits that were i could tell i was supposed to laugh at were pretty funny um and like the you, batman you know stuff you know they're really funny when you describe them as the bits i was supposed to laugh at. well like, like I, there was other things you were laughing at in this movie too i'm sure and those <laughs> things i guess were not but like like there were things that were jokes that i'm like that's a good joke um a lot of it was visual a lot of it was like a character thinks they have superpowers and doesn't and runs into a wall stuff like that i enjoyed like when the flash cleaned up his whole apartment really quickly and then the girl comes in and then the whole thing explodes into mess again like i like stuff like that um, I also think character wise, I think it was a incredibly like, I, I mean, obviously in hindsight, having two Ezra Millers is a crazy choice, but the idea of having an Ezra Miller be in the movie that is Flash, but is like kind of the more serious Flash that we always kind of would have expected from this character. And then the little jokey Marvel Flash kind of to be the Flash that our Flash gets to be like, Jesus, you guys, this guy sucks is a really interesting way to kind of endear you to this version of the character that never existed in the first place. Um, or just be annoyed by both, I guess. But, like, I th I don't know. I think that that was interesting. And I think that more or less worked. Um, that the second one for me. Yeah, I, I'm sure. The Batman stuff was fine. I didn't really care one way or the other. I think he was good. Like, I, I, I do think compared to, say, a Michael Shannon or something like that. Not that I think Michael Shannon phoned it in. I do think Michael Keaton was having a little fun. And then... Um, you know, Supergirl was there too. Superwoman, or whatever. <laughs> and um, I just, I really didn't like the ending. I feel like this Flashpoint as a comic story, I always kind of hated because of the way the metaphor works itself into the plot and the way it does become this like, you can't change the past because if you do, the multiverse dies. And that's supposed to kind of correlate with like, get over your loss because you have to move forward. They never quite mesh. And especially in this movie, kind of the way we've talked about it, 
and after seeing Spider-Verse, it just leaves me with a really bad taste of like, what am, what did I just watch? Like, what is this movie about? And then when you actually get to this George Clooney ending, it makes the whole movie pointless, which I get. Like, yeah, it doesn't all have to be like pointless, like setting up, you know, Justice League 5, but just like pointless in terms of like, well, I guess he didn't do anything then. I guess we're back to square one and we've learned nothing. And I just, I don't know. I That part of it really I mean, annoyed me. It- it's crazy that the movie suggests that if he just changes everything a little bit less, then that will be fine for, like, five minutes. Yeah, I honestly, like, if a character like, you know, Swamp Thing came out and was like, Barry Allen, your mom has to die. Specifically, that one thing has to happen, otherwise all of reality breaks. You have other options and other things, but that you can't change. I would buy it, or I'd be a little bit more forgiving towards that as a plot point, but because... The lesson becomes just let it go. I don't understand what it what we're doing here. Um, also, just fucking doctor the video, Barry. You have it. Nobody else has it. Dude, Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Bruce Wayne knows your dad didn't do it, right? Just fucking. Who cares? Like, don't go back in time. This feels like Doctor Strange not getting Peter getting to college again. Like you have other options, dude. But whatever. Have Cyborg do it. This seems like the kind of thing he can do. But. Yeah, the movie, I don't think it's, I, I think it's like, I think it's right on there, which is, the, the crazy thing is, the parts of this movie I liked, I liked so much that I think this might be like my third favorite DC movie out of all of these, behind well, Suicide Squad and Birds of Prey. Now, it's an incredibly low bar that it had to clearly gonna, get there. But I was going to say, like, that's, that's not a competitive category. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. It's like, a, it's like how, um, they're in the Comedy Central roast, Anthony Jeselnik would go ahead and, like, do five minutes just absolutely annihilating every single person. But because ha- Rose has to end positively, he would say, like, disregarding everything I previously said, I really respect you, James Franco. Okay. But, like, it really does feel like, even though I said all of those things about how I didn't really like parts of it, this is probably the third best one they've ever made. Like, I th- I've heard people describe this as kind of like it would be a middling Marvel movie, and I think that's right. I think uh, No, be, I think that's I, wrong. I think it's on par with a low-tier Marvel yeah, Agreed. I think this is a Quantumania situation. Yeah, I, I felt yeah. similarly about those two movies. No, you know what? I don't. I don't think that's fair. I think there was parts of this that worked way better. No, no part of Quantumania was as good. I mean, I guess this differs person to person, but the baby shower scene, I think, Oof. was. I loved it. I oh thought that was god. great. I hated it. Oh my god! And see, like that's what a flash movie should be. No, it should. No movie should be that, no, Nando. That was no, that was the, unconscionable. It's the fun. reason I hated it is because it looked so bad. <laughs> that part I get, sure. But like, there was no one scene in Ant Man that I was like, "Oh, they're really doing it." Like, this feels like an Ant Man movie. Whereas that was like, this is what a flash movie is supposed to be. And yeah, this, the effects. I'm really bad at judging. Like when people said the CGI was bad, I was like, I kind of agree, but I can't think of any specific parts where I was watching it when I was like, I don't like the CGI here. So like oh, when people I started explaining several. which parts they didn't like, and besides the you know dead eyed monster man in the end, but like the parts, <laughs> like because I've heard people say they didn't like the inside of the speed force and the like oh, me wall of faces but i and then andy machete said well no it was supposed to look weird and i was like yeah i thought that was what that was like supposed to look like polar express monster man yeah <laughs> definitely i th- no, i thought it was supposed to be like scary and and like evil kind of like a oh you're not supposed to be doing i don't know that felt like more of a choice i understand people that were like a lot of the stuff at the end where people were fighting and in, in the desert felt kind of plasticky like that i think i could get a sense for but um, but yeah, I don't know. I didn't have I didn't have as big of a problem. I'm more forgiving when it comes to that kind of stuff. I don't know. I um, I I can understand the idea of the Speed Force is supposed to look kind of uncanny and, and like scary, and like I could get behind that. My problem is that this, this movie's version of uncanny and scary is it looks like bad CGI. Yeah, so that is I'm, always. I tough. don't think it's uncanny or scary. I'm like, well, this CGI looks bad. Yeah, you would need to have like the first bit of it look good, and then he starts running, and it all gets a little distorted or something for that effect to feel intentional. Um, but anyway, yeah. So that's my thoughts. Um, DJ, what did you think of the Flash? I think you guys mostly got it. I want to tell an anecdote uh, from uh, no, my movie your, movie your experience. Theory experience. Yeah, yeah so I this, I, was, this I, is good. I have a lot of complicated feelings about this movie, which, like, I think we'll get into because I mine were 
very much from like the nitpicking perspective. It's like, why was this in it? Why did they do this? I didn't agree with this decision. And we'll talk about all of that. But um, I called Nando after because I'm like, I just need to talk about this one thing, which I promise we'll get to and, and I'll stop teasing it. But so movie ends, the Aquaman scene ends, Warner Brothers logo, lights come up, and there was this like row of teenagers, like three rows down from me. I didn't even know they were there. It was like a good crowd. Um, the witch had a night off, I guess. Um, and this <laughs> one kid stands up and he goes, yo, that fucking sucked. Yeah. And like, the kids are all right. <laughs> Dance, that's exactly how I felt. I'm like, this kid fucking gets it. Um <laughs> Like, you would think, like, that audience of, like, seven, whatever, high school or college kids were like, we're going to go and see The Flash because we got nothing else better to do. Like, this is for them, right? This is, like, beats your super movie. And I don't know how the rest of them felt about it, but you lost one. And his friends were like, no, man, you're so wrong. Like, they're all just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, like, I don't know, actually, that, that feels like an aggressive reaction, but, like, I could see if you were excited for a Flash or Flashpoint movie and that's what you got being quite frustrated. Because I think that's like my biggest feeling leaving the movie was like frustration because you could see everything that was left on the table and they just decided to go with like the easiest bits like Nino to your point, right? Like the baby shower scene is a choice, but the movie is not full of those choices. The movie is this like mishmash of like reshoots and rewrites and you know really they, people getting their hands shot. all over it are you sure <laughs> no, i don't think i think this was one pass <laughs> one take baby yeah no this edits is a famously very smooth and easy production yeah and no reshoots were made especially not someone while someone was a fugitive from the law that's right but like that's the like right so correct but also like we've seen like movies like have reshoot problems that like make it out okay and you don't see it everywhere <laughs> we saw like, one in this universe <laughs> yeah <laughs> we've seen several in this universe probably that we didn't even notice but yeah that's is not it's not something like like birds of prey full of reshoots i think that one's fine yeah yeah and I, I just think ultimately this movie was ill-served because it accomplished nothing, right? It wasn't good. It wasn't interesting. It didn't make them money. Like, it had a horrible box office. We didn't talk about that, but it, like, I mean, I think there's a lot of things around that box office conversation. Elemental also had the worst Pixar opening ever. Um, And maybe, like, Father's Day weekend is, like, not a great uh weekend in general, but... Or I, maybe I th the movies should look like they're going to be good. I don't no, know. right. <laughs> or maybe movie theaters should be good instead of bad all the time. Like, I mean, also, mine was fine. or maybe fucking Warner Brothers shouldn't put Shazam on HBO Max 15 seconds after it goes into theaters, because I have <laughs> yeah. a feeling a lot of people decided not to go to this because they knew it would be in HBO Max in a week and a half or just and Max. Let's be clear. It's the correct decision. <laughs> I mean, I, it, I, I get it. I totally get it. And like box office isn't a great measure, but like maybe it is because some movies do awesome. You know, like it's not like back to normal. But those movies... other two great movies that are that came out this year, yeah, right, and Mario, Mario a bad movie that <laughs> yeah. stinks. Uh, <laughs> I I think I saw that adjusted for inflation, which is I know a weird metric, but like Green Lantern, which also came out Father's Day weekend in 2011, had like a better opening than The Flash. It like it's just. I mean, ultimately, uh, it this might movie be was... a better movie. Honestly, I think I, I, I'd maybe. have to see it again. But yeah, I'm not sure. I that's a very like ABC kind of movie. I think I remember just... when we did the pod. I was like, I actually kind of like this movie, so I'll go ahead and say I like that one more than this. I, I think you did. But I think that my biggest problem with this movie is that it tried to do so many things and a lot of those things were bad and maybe it didn't do enough of the things that would have grabbed an audience that would have been like, no guys, you're not seeing it. This Flash movie is awesome, right? Like if it made more weird CGI monster choices, right? Like if, if at the end of this movie, all of the spheres like broke open and all those characters started like fighting each other and... You know, we're doing for 10 minutes, like, Crisis on Infinite Earths, which I know is impossible. But, like, if that were a choice of the movie, that, like, oh, it, it's off. We, we sold this as Flashpoint, but, JK, it's, like, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Like, maybe then it's, like, a movie that's interesting. But what did it do for the greater good? So, I don't know. you know, I'm, I'm curious that's where we're at. Apparently, the Snyder people didn't like it, even though it proved the immutable fact that men are better than women. Well, I mean, I imagine the Snyder people didn't like it because it disproved their movie. Like... The, oh. oh, you it, know what? Actually, it's probably because it has jokes in it. That too, yeah. It decanonized the um the the time travel scene, the speed force scene, because I really still don't 
really Wait, don't no, understand it what's going canonized on. Canonized it because isn't he? Isn't he like? Uh, remember when I went back a second? In time yeah. Oh, I, I, did he? I, I thought I he said that to Bruce. I'm pretty sure Batman and him talk about that time that he did time travel a little. And he's like, I, I thought, think I could do time travel a lot, actually. I thought that was him discovering that for the first time. Huh. Well, it's shot like he's discovering it for the first time. But then in the dialogue scene, he's like, remember when I did it a little bit before? No, yeah, now I can yeah. do it a lot. Which so I think does, is a reshoot thing. That's why that's confusing. So yes. So it does canonize yes. the Snyderverse. Yeah, that's weird. I mean, you know. It didn't. Uh, people, the, the Snyder fans don't like it specifically because it didn't have Superman in it, and apparently that was at one point the plan. That I know for why fact. is why is that their like white whale now? Why did they all land it on Henry Cavill Superman? Because it's <laughs> I don't want to say the worst part of those, but like the Man of Steel, the original, let's call it a fulcrum point for how people felt about this universe was Man of Steel. Is Superman grim? Is this movie too gray? Whatever, all that stuff. Right. So Whether you realize that Man of Steel was bad or liked it for some unfathomable reason. Right. So the defending Man of Steel has become the thing. Like I think a lot of them, the Snyderverse fans that I that I know, the ones, let's say the reasonable Snyderverse fans, will say Batman v Superman. You know, it had some good stuff, but it has problems. I get that. But Man of Steel, that movie was great. And so then. Any attempt to erase Henry Cavill is some sort of attack on Man of Steel. And by by extension, the symbolic, you know, kind of like the effigy movie. I don't know. It's, it's was, tough. Was Henry Cavill the only Superman not in this movie? I mean, like, if you count the TV ones, no. But All right, well, like... It, and, and if you count Brandon Ralph. Yeah, true. All right, so maybe is it like, how are there... Through like three other Supermen in this movie besides Henry Cavill. Oh, like, I, I have no idea. I, I think that that argument makes complete sense. He wasn't going to be in that scene, though. Apparently, he was going to show up at the courthouse at the end to be like, see, everything's A-OK, Barry, and that's what they cut. Uh, I... I don't know. I am, by the way, in the camp that Henry Cavill was done dirty. Um, but like, I feel we're I, so past that now. I don't have anything against Henry Cavill. I think he's a fine actor. Uh, it's just like I don't understand. Like Nando has explained it to me, and now I do. But I was just like, I don't understand why that's like the the line that we're drawing in the sand here. The flashpoint, as it were, for the yeah. this conversation. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys ever read Flashpoint, the comic? I know we've we mentioned it a lot, and I think you both said you have, or at least are familiar with the story. But, like, you you guys know it, right? Uh, I have I'm read and I've watched aware. the uh, animated movie, which I think is okay. great, by the way. I have never read it nor watched it, but I'm vaguely aware of what happens. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it's it's bad. Um, it's a bad, <laughs> oh, it's a bad story on. that exists to reset a universe that is also not quite working, so I get it. But, like, it's, yeah, it's well, a lot I, like this. I think uh, I I think that's a defensible choice for them to decide to use a storyline that's not good from the comics mm-hmm. because every time Marvel did it, all the fans were like, "Yeah, they're doing Civil War," or like, "Oh man, they're doing like the Mephisto One More Day thing," and I'm like, "We all hated those. Have you forgotten?" <laughs> well, yeah, and, and and it's funny because in those. They would take the very broad concept of what people like. Spider-Man makes a deal that fucks up everything. Captain America and Iron Man fight. And then take the parts of the comic story out that don't quite work to turn it into a fun, workable movie. Like, these two that we've described are probably in the top tier of Marvel movies. Or, like, the top third, at least. Well, to, to some, perhaps. Oh, well, yeah, sure. I think, yeah. But then, you've got these, which, like, it really feels like there's a movie here... The flashpoint was shoved into, and all the flashpoint elements of it make it worse. And but I mean, obviously, it's got some flashpoint in it, like at heart. But all of this Bruce Wayne stuff, being Michael Keaton, and all this Superwoman sod stuff, it's just so like weird and pointless. Like, oh my God, I when we got to the the climax, and it was like we're doing the Zod fight from Man of Steel. I was like. I, you couldn't. I don't think you could have picked anything else in the entire DCEU that I would have been less excited for. Yeah. Oh, let's play this game. Let's play this game. Uh, uh, you would have been less excited for the part in uh, Justice League where uh, the Flash is, is on Wonder Woman's boobs. What if it was that over and over again? Well, you've seen it, uh, DJ. I've never seen that because the only version of Justice League I've ever watched uh, is the Snyder Cut. Oh, all right then. 
Yeah, I would say, like, because, okay, so for for people that aren't familiar, a lot of the elements of this movie, obviously, are similar to Flashpoint, but different, right? Um, DJ, what's the big one? Oh, is this where I get to get on my hobby horse? Yeah, do that. Yeah, I, so, um, real quick, can I, like, I don't know if this is relevant, but I want to do it anyway. Can I have a meager defense of Flashpoint? Is any of this relevant? You know, That's a great it. point. <laughs> yeah. My meager defense of Flashpoint is that I'm a big uh, jangly keys guy, and I like seeing the thing like, oh, that's like the thing I know, but different. And I think Flashpoint does that like enough to where I'm like, yeah, I I, I like these choices and like I'm good with them. The Thomas Wayne one, which like, we'll, we'll, which I'm going to talk about in a second, but like that is my meager defense of Flashpoint, where it's like, oh, it's the same but different. So sure. where I'm like, I, isn't that fun? But, I think yeah. those things in Flashpoint do work. Like I think the idea of Thomas Wayne or a Superman that got captured by the government or whatever, um, you know, the King Aquaman business is interesting. <laughs> um, but I think the, the, the whole idea of this story, and we keep coming back to it, but this like choice, this, this metaphor of Barry don't, you know, like move past your grief versus Barry don't time travel to save a person just never works. And it's the whole movie or it's a whole book. In the book, there is an antagonist that makes a little bit more sense. And like, you know, that part of it, I think, could really help this movie. But just in general, that whole core concept, I don't like. Yeah. Uh, okay, so hobby horse time, bitches. Okay, so uh, in Flashpoint, one of the big, like, things uh, that's, like, a big change that Barry, like, fucks up pretty good is that um, Batman is not bruce wayne but he is thomas wayne the father so um he is older because like age difference duh um and he's like more rugged and is just like more pissed off because he was a like a full-grown man who lost his wife and son not like a boy who lost his parents which um, like actually dj uh, oh no i got him actually becomes his joker oh that's right shit you're right my they bad, just my lose bad. Bruce. Yeah. yeah yeah you're right um my b uh, uh damn it so yeah, that that's what happens. See, look, my memory sucks anyway. I mean, that um, part isn't. I don't think out of outside of one shot that is. Yeah, I, I forget that in the Flashpoint happened. comic. I think it's like a, a side comic, but that is a thing. Yeah, uh, which makes him even more pissed off. Could you imagine? Right. So he he has like uh fucking like holsters and shoots guns and shit, and he's he's like he's barely Batman, but he's he's still Batman. Um, so. I had, like, while watching this movie, I was kind of, like, working through it. And you see, like, the old man Bruce Wayne stuff. And I was like, oh, Diggins, you're going to love this. I'm like, oh, I'm a genius. I got this. I know what's going down. That is actually Daddy Wayne. I know they called him Bruce and, like, whatever. But maybe he's, like, hiding it or whatever. He's like, oh, no. I'm like, or or just, like they changed it so that his dad's yeah. name was Bruce in this time. Bruce, yeah. Right. Whatever. And, but I'm like, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. But then, and Diggins, I want you to tell me if you remember this. There... Flash is like talking to Bruce like oh Bruce I'm sorry I lost your parents and he's like yeah me too kid or whatever he says and he goes to like this little picture of the family the Waynes that's on a shelf and he he like strokes it with his like two fingers and he places his fingers over and like you, whenever this is on HBO Max like you could go back and watch this because unless I dreamed it up but I'm so sure this happened because it's so vivid in my mind he like his fingers go over Martha and little Bruce, little B. And I'm like, oh, my God, that seals it. He's he's putting the fingers over the two that he lost. And he's a dad. He's going to be like, Barry, there's a good to tell you. Uh, the reason I'm sold is because I lost my son and wife. And you live in a timeline where my son lived. Because da, da, da. that would be interesting or whatever. Um, but no, fuck me. That's not what happened. It's, it's just a stupid fucking no, like regular. <laughs> DJ, what you I'm an to asshole. Consider- what you failed to consider is that if he was dad instead of Bruce, then it wouldn't be like the thing I've seen before. And if it's not the thing I've seen before, <laughs> then I won't clap when I see it. Yeah, I mean, fair point, fair point. Um, God, I was so mad because I was like, I love when I feel like I can get the jump on something. Where I'm like, yeah, I fucking did it. But uh, yeah, no, I'm a fucking moron, it seems. So I well, was very upset. That is kind of the problem like with the way... So, like, obviously there's problems with Flashpoint. That is the problem with the way the Flashpoint here is adapted, is they don't even do that. They don't even do the, like, Barry goes to the version of the timeline where, you know, this thing that we're familiar with is there but worse or different or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes to the one where Batman's a different guy but pretty much the same and has different weapons and also is older. But, like, all that stuff only matters to us. 
None of it matters to yeah. Barry. It might as well be Bruce Wayne. It might as well be like Ben Affleck. It, it, who gives a shit? Superwoman, same powers, same whole deal. It, she, it's not even like she could fucking speak a different Kryptonian language or something. That'd be kind of interesting. But like she could just speak Russian. Like, I don't know. She was raised in Russia. Where'd she learn English? But the idea that they, like, that, and I've heard that they, I, I believe we saw this in interviews and this went around a lot. They said, the only reason they decided to do this was Keaton, dis- like, or the thing that made them decide to do this movie the way they did is Keaton saying yes. And it very much yeah. does feel like what's well, an excuse to make that work. But like, fla- but doing that with Flashpoint does kind of remove the most interesting thing about Flashpoint. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I like it's it's one of those things where if you make a Flashpoint movie, which that's what it is at its core, then like choices feel like they have to be more pur- purposeful then to dig into your point but that's the thing i know right mm-hmm. like if you're just doing that's the thing i know well, i don't know who but gives a fuck you see the thing is it's like a flashpoint movie it makes it's like that's why it should be such a slam dunk like if they never made one of these before and they started with this i'd be like oh, all right yeah whatever but like this is you know 10 movies into a cinematic universe have jared leto yeah. be the batman or something that's how you do this like work yeah. up, take the existing material and oh. I mean, definitely don't do that. But like something like say, that, yeah, no, do if that. We, yeah. If we put Ezra Miller and Jared Leto in the same, <laughs> like in the same room in the same movie, yeah. then like the the weirdo uh, energies radiating it off of both of them might have destroyed the universe. I mean, but one All would have to destroy would the other. You know, we'd come out one less, I guess. But either way, like, yeah, there's things like that, like Aquaman. You know, who was raised to be king of the ocean, never went to Earth, Orm's brother for real. And then we just do that, and that's fun. But instead, they they did the opposite. I don't, like, I understand why they did it, but it's just such a weird choice. I really, like, this, like I love that yeah. they don't even bother to explain what happened to Wonder Woman. Because, like, she's thousands of years old, right? Yep. And, like, yeah, the, t- the time reverberations went into the past or whatever. But, like, we mm-hmm. get, like... Arthur, uh, Aquaman's dad never met his mom, and so he was never born. Sure. Batman is just a different guy. Okay, whatever. Victor, uh, Cyborg never had his accident, so he's still just a football player. Cool. Wonder Woman, she's not here. Don't worry about it. I mean, I think that one makes sense, right? Steve Trevor never landed on the island. The Amazons are still doing their thing. I mean, if anything, the bigger question is, does it mean Ares is in charge of all the rest yeah, of does it? That- does that mean that Britain lost World War One? Yeah. The <laughs> yoke to David Thewlis is, like, actually the president. We just never get to see it. But, like, he rules the whole universe with an iron fist. Hell that yeah. That actually would be awesome if we got to this universe and then, like, he showed up as, like, oh, I'll fight Dodd, guys, don't worry. And we're like, oh, right. That's, again, that's, that's the other thing. It's like, if you, like, so this movie is Back to the Future, right, obviously. Um, <laughs> and it's a wonderful life, kind of. Like, not as much. But, like, there is an opportunity, if you're not going to do Back to the Future, to do A Wonderful Life and to ask the question, like, what would these movies be like if there was no Flash? What what essential things has he done that you could work forward from and go, oh, okay, so this is a universe where Superman is evil because they never did this or whatever. And, um, that, yeah, it just – all of this requires more cooperation from, I guess, the rest of the Snyderverse that they've always wanted to distance themselves from and – it just it's yeah. so it's such a weird universe. The problem is that you keep building on increasingly unstable foundations of bad <laughs> movies and movies that people don't like. And eventually the whole thing crumbles and all the babies just hit the pavement, one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> no microwaves to keep them safe. Uh I uh, that ba- that microwave baby's dead, right? Like there's no Yes. <laughs> That's the stupidest thing, is that like the, those CGI babies don't make it through. Like they're they're not like you, I mean it doesn't turn the that microwave baby's on. Not staying, I, but it does. No, but, like, but fire does hit it. Yeah, like the inside of that thing gets hot. Like mm. the and also, uh, if you move a baby even for like a couple inches at the speed he's moving at, like that baby's dead. Babies well, can't I move mean, that fast. Yeah, speed and, force. And, that's always been the thing. Barry can catch a falling but then baby. Later, but then later, he's like, I can't move people with speed force because it's bad for them. So then, why part, didn't those babies die? Well, that part's dumb. But the rest of well. Does he? What does he say about that? He has a better explanation. It's like I can't move him more than a couple of feet or something like that. He says something I, like that, but he only yeah. moves. 
He only moves... Young Barry only moves old Barry a couple feet, and then he, like, vomits for ten seconds. Listen, forget the speed force. The freaking, um, like, when they're on the gurney and the babies are, like, just kind of chilling. Like, those, all those babies are falling off the gurney and they're they're dead. Like, it's... They're just rolling off on their own volition. Like, well, Barry they, turns around was, and, oh, no. <laughs> the fact that they were in, like, the hospital implies to me that they're newborns and newborns really can't even roll oh, well that's true. uh and from mostly nitpicking the uh the maternity ward or the, or the nursery would not be on the like exterior wing of the uh hospital near windows because that would be a safety hazard so for that's not where that would reason. be yeah for this just in case <laughs> I, yeah i did i i got it i i liked all that stuff i thought that was good that's what a Flash movie would be like if they made a Flash movie instead of this. Like, it would yeah, be him, I, it'd be the rogues committing crimes like, oh, we're gonna throw all the babies off the roof, Flash, and yeah. then Flash has to stop them or something. I like that they did, like, a slow speed force thing, but there was still, like, it wasn't like, oh, let me check my watch, so I got all nothing but time. Like, there was still a thing that was stopping him from, you know, immediately completing the thing. Um... What did your I mean, audience think of that scene? I got no reaction. Pretty muted, yeah. Mine loved it. I thought, and then, like, he was gra- grabbing for the food and stuff. They were really into it. Oh, oh, bro, you know what? You know what thing in the movie got the biggest reaction or the, uh, from my audience? Um, is it is it the thing that got the biggest reaction in my audience and made me want to die? Is it a joke What's, or an old thing? Like, got back to. Like brought to life yeah. by computer. Is it, is it I, a thing that happens in the movie, or is it that people saw the thing that they know and they clapped? Guys, it's so obvious. It's. That's that's what got the biggest reaction in my theater. Ridiculous. I don't even want her to show up in Blue Beetle, but I do now. I want that to be a rule. Every one of these needs a scene where she shows up. I hope every DC movie from now on, yeah, has like a 10 second Wonder Woman cameo. <laughs> great i still don't really like it like i think it's i uh, the other thing that i think works with the baby shower scene i think this is the best ben affleck has ever been in these and i don't know what it is that he's doing differently but he has Not like being an, directed by Zack snyder yeah maybe he has like a fucking kevin conroy kind of vibe um in the way he talks and it just i thought it was good i like this costume better now I like that he did little flips and shit. That was cool. Yeah, is, mean, is it because he was doing the 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 Christian Bale uh, fucking motorbike yeah. cosplay? Is that what it was? <laughs> well, I like the color. It was like the gray and blue. It can work. We can yeah. believe as a people and make it happen. <laughs> like we don't have to just do black more black. It's like we love more black. I do think when we get brave in the bold, and we know Andy Machete is directing it, which like for all the movie's faults, it must have been a fucking insane like shoot. Like I. The fact that this movie is coherent at all is like did an incredible yeah. job. I'm sure Honestly, it could have been better. And like, it's, I want... it's like it's hard to blame anybody for this yeah. movie because it's it's like a million different people had their hands on a single second of it each. Mm-hmm. I am curious. I do want to have a, a an accounting of that though. Like, who said what thing? Because mm-hmm. some of them seem like they were all said by different people, it's, especially the cameos. Like, it doesn't feel like they are. It doesn't feel like anybody else knew what other cameos were coming because there's no consistency to it. And right, I just I'm I'm so curious. Um, but yeah, I like Batman in that scene. I think he's good. Uh, oh, what I, it, I got? Oh, sorry, I was just gonna say. I gotta say to the baby scene now, though. I I agree with you in principle. We're like, yeah, stuff like this is fun for like a super speed kind of person to be doing, and like could be cool. Again, the only reason I don't like it is because it looks so bad. Mm-hmm. Like the that's, CGI yeah. is terrible, that's and fair. I don't blame the artists because of course I'm sure, like as is the usual Hollywood standard, mm-hmm. uh, they were all thrown into a cage. Uh, given like a couple of fifteen-year-old laptops, and told that whoever finishes the scene the fastest gets to live. <laughs> uh, but like for whatever corners they cut or rushing they did that they forced on these poor artists, it it's so rubbery and like plastic and looks so fake that I was like, this sucks. Yeah, I will say the one bit before that when he runs through the credit sequence. And the camera pulls back and does that that thing. I was like, that's pretty cool. I think maybe that like juiced me up for all this other stuff, but it gave me gave me life, a little bit of life. But also, I, 
Those people saw the Flash leave that deli, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It. They see people outside being like, oh my god, it's the Flash. I don't think it needs to be airtight, all this logic, but I do think it needs got, to be a little bit more tight than it is. I gotta say, regardless of what you think of the truth of the allegations, insane that they have a scene where young girls are screaming over so, Ezra Miller and I love him. Insane. So funny. Right? So funny. I, I like, I mean, and I mean, like, there's, like, that the scene the scene where the fake Barry goes and like does the shit where his clothes not fake young Barry does the thing and is all naked like it's such a weirdly like it, it, it's made for an audience that doesn't exist like young Ezra Miller fans, <laughs> we got it guys you see his butt hooray and like, I refuse I will not give these movies any credit for uh, actor butt I, oh I don't no give no them no any credit until I see the full hog. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe if you slow it down. You... So, yeah. Um, what else? What else? What else? Do you got? What do you think of? Listen. What do you think of Ezra Miller in this? Let's let's pretend. Let's live in a world <laughs> where they're a big star and everyone loves them. Do we? I ooh, still don't ooh. quite understand this Barry Allen. It, like, if you told me this was, you know, this original character we've created for this movie, cool. I never. It's so hard for me to see this character as Barry Allen. Well, the, um, I think the problem for me is Barry Allen. I've never been a big Flash guy, so uh, am I wrong? But I just it always feels like the other Flashes have more personality than Barry. Barry's the most like I'm a generic hero man. Yeah. So it's like I don't. I'm not even sure what I what a Barry Allen would be to me. I mean, like I'm trying to think of who, who in these movies does fill that, or like in any of these movies fills that role. Like, he would just be more, like, hmm. I mean, he's, like, kind of, like, in the show. The show guy is more, like... I mean, just for example, the show guy looks more like him. Um, even though the show guy isn't blonde, but it's still, like... I think, like, I guess, like, all this, like... All these jokes at the expense of, like, oh, the Flash is awkward. And, like, standing around waving a teenage girl. I don't know. It just, that like, that is doesn't feel quite right. You know what's weird? I almost prefer, like, we're just talking about Ezra Miller, Ezra, Ezra Miller, excuse me, as an actor. I prefer, like, the young Barry in this movie because at least it is, like, a direction to go in where, like you said, it's like, oh, old Barry's looking at young Barry being like, you dick. And he's just kind of have to contend with, you know, that whole, ah, this kid had everything and just wasted all, taking it for granted, da da da. And, like, I actually kind of like the young one as a character. And it's like, well, that was Ezra Miller. I, I, Ezra Miller, Jesus Christ, Ezra Miller acting. So I don't know. Maybe like they do have acting shops that I can appreciate. It's just hard for me to remove that film of ah, uh, I don't love you as a person based on a lot of the stuff you did. I mean, I'm not one of those people who's been going around saying like this vindicates Ezra Miller's talent. They're a generational superstar. Look at how good they are in this movie. Finally, a charismatic lead for a DC movie. But they're they're good. They're good in this movie. Yeah. I think, like, they do everything they're supposed to do in this movie. However, it still is a Barry Allen that I just find so strange. But I do think, like, some of the bits where they're playing around together are kind of funny. The bit where it's, like, talking about Bruce Wayne and it's like, that guy's Bruce Wayne. I thought this was a cousin's dinner. I thought that was cute. I thought a lot of the stuff where, like, Barry would do a thing... Like and it would like I think this movie did did pretty well because it does this really early with the um the girl that see him bit, but later like when the suit comes out of the ring for the first time, and then it just like kind of deflates and falls to the floor and it's like oh you're supposed to put it on and, oh cool like stuff like that I think worked for me but I I could see that not working for other people but those like little subversions of superhero trope things but um. I, I weirdly liked the Eric Stoltz Back to the Future bit. I love that. Yeah. The, that was like a good bit, I thought. I'm like, oh, why don't he do more bits? These are like good and funny. It was probably one of the writers who wrote the script for it and then like, you know, left in 2018 or whatever. Well, that's the thing with like some parts of that movie, like that part in the in the uh, in the apartment with the goon friends does feel pretty tight compared to, say, like the ending where big old chunky Ezra Miller in white hair comes and like yells it like all that stuff feels like and that's why they're definitely from different move different scripts or something like that but like that stuff is so like well edited and like well shot and 
Also, the, yeah. the girl roommate uh, is uh, Erin from Der- Dairy Girls, which I didn't know until I looked at IMDb. Oh! That's, that's crazy to me. That's interesting. Wait, because is that the friend from earlier in the movie that's working at the l- crime lab? I don't know. I couldn't place that girl. So, like, Patty Spivet is the name of that character. Because I know that is from, that's like a flat, her and the other boy that they're with is, um... Dr. Alchemy. I can't remember the actor's or that okay. character's name. She, but, she's credited as Patty Spivet. The, the, okay, yeah. So then, yeah, she's that one. So she is, so she's like, that's the deal. It's like friends from Thing, friends from, like, they, they are that because of Barry, I guess. Um, but yeah, I don't know. No part was cool. Like, oh, I, oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Nando. Real yeah. quick, did you guys notice? I'm sure you watched the whole credits because that's the rules. Mm-hmm. Did you notice a certain actor was thanked at the very end of the credits? Oh my god, I did, and I was like, "That's weird," but I can't remember who it was now. It, so it's it, he had a cameo in the movie, which I just totally missed. Nikolai Castorwaldo, yes, is yes. credited with a thank you. Apparently, he's the guy who's sitting on the bench that Barry, young Barry, steals pizza from in ah, in the, that well. little learning your powers bit. Yeah. So apparently him and Machete are very good friends, but like went right over my head. Um, I would be so mad if I saw him at the premiere because he went to the premiere too. I saw like footage of the, of the like shots of the premiere um, and I hadn't seen the movie and I was like, oh shit, he's reverse flash. That's perfect. Like he's good casting for it. He's an older version of him. They kind of have similar jaw lines that the <laughs> movie is good now. And then that's just pizza guy. It's like pizza papa. We love it when guys <laughs> from friends are pizza guys. It's pretty good. I have Wait. a uh, related uh, question point to that. So, um, d- it does, is Young Barry the the Reverse Flash like analog in this movie? Is he the one who kills Barry's mom? No, or like then we, who the we, fuck killed Barry's mom? We have no answer to that question. And I do think it God is. Damn it! Yeah, it's it's stabbing robbery gone wrong in broad daylight. <laughs> like in suburban whatever central city and but also, like two people were like two rooms away and he got out clean yeah nobody, that's why it's supposed nobody to be saw, reverse flash nobody saw yeah. him nobody like noticed a man with some blood on him running away in broad daylight in this suburb there's nothing N- nothing nothing got out clean <laughs> Yeah, like no fingerprints or nothing. Like, <laughs> so maybe that's why Barry went again forensics. It's like, how did you oh. someone stab my mom in the middle of the day and just got away? Well, that is why it gets into forensics. But in the comics, or like at least in the show, it makes a little bit more sense because it's like, oh, he's not just wants to get in forensics. He wants to like do experiments because some weird otherworldly shit happened at his house that he never quite understood. But like, he's right. got to learn enough science to figure out. That reverse flash is a thing and whatever. Um, but yeah, with this, it's just like proving his dad's innocence. And I really feel like it'd be tough to prove uh, if, hey, I was there and he wasn't there. I saw him enter the house. Isn't enough. Um, because, I don't know. Doesn't seem like he did it. It's not even like, like, I think if Barry didn't see his dad enter the house, I'd be a little bit more sympathetic to like the, oh yeah, I guess he would go to jail for life. But like. I don't know. It doesn't seem. It doesn't make any sense. Like it'd be really hard to put that case together. Yeah. Although, and, uh, in defense of the legal system, like Barry's dad, why would you put your hands on the handle of the knife exactly yeah. like you had used it? Yeah. Why would you do that? Yeah. Maybe he did it. Maybe he did kill the mom. <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> Barry's dad. Um. Also, also, like, and I know the way time travel and how it's explained in this movie is not consistent with anything, even with stuff within the own, even, within its own movie. I was going to say, yeah, even within yeah. itself. Yeah. Yeah, the Why? end of sentences that it is in <laughs> change. Also, Batman's an expert on time travel for no reason at all. He's I an mean, expert on everything. He's a detective. Yeah, he's time. He's man alive. Time detective. Yeah, sure. So here's my question. Why not just have old Barry at that point the old shadow monster with all the spikes coming out of him um why not have him be the one who killed Barry's mom to be like I had to kill her because it's the only way to get you to me it's the only way we could save Kara and Bruce was for me to kill her like just make close the loop that way right like isn't that how that should be done I mean it's a way like it's it's be, close to that would be even more confusing <laughs> Yeah, I think, like, it's closer to what they do in Flashpoint, except in Flashpoint, 
reverse slash is just like I did it because fuck you, I hate you. I've always wanted yeah. to do this and I did it and I ruined your whole life. I'm sick at that. Like, and I don't think you need a reverse slash here because I don't think it would have worked either. It, I mean, it could have, but it would have been another like super undercooked villain that just shows up at the very end right. and says it was me, yeah. Austin, all along. But like, there's a little bit <laughs> where I feel my, like not even my immediate family knew Barry. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Like, I feel like there could be a bit... Like, I think the problem is... I mean, I see, none of that bothers me as much as the the actual, like, moral and lesson of the movie and how that factors into everything. Because, like... So, like, for, for the time travel stuff, I can't even imagine what the right answer would be. Because I still don't think the right answer is let your mom die. Mostly yeah, because Miles Morales told me it's not yesterday. Yeah. And, and fuck also, it. Like, it's always really weird when comic books are like, there are some immutable things that can never be changed. Points in time that are so significant that not that like, you know, reality would crumble at the seams if you change them. And most of them are when women die or get beat up. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. It's so weird. Like, yeah, it's just really weird. This is why Flashpoint is just not a good, not a good story. How yeah, weird is I, it this year that we got three movies? Well, I guess this doesn't count because in the comics, Miles Morales' mom is killed. Um, and okay. I don't think that's what they're going to do in the movie. But like him, Star Lord, and uh, Barry all sitting at a bar just talking about their dead moms. <laughs> I mean, I I get it that it's like the movie is going for a different metaphor. Spider Verse, the metaphor is like the feeling, like the the psychological feeling of like that your trauma is foundational to who you are, and like that you need to suffer to like become a a type of person, and like unlearning that and realizing that's not true, and suffering is just suffering. It does not create good. Um, and this one is more about like uh, you know accepting that the things that have happened in the past happened and like you know being able to still grieve but also move on and focus on the future which are both like right. by like by themselves in the vacuum fine messages um the problem is like in spider-verse it's spider-verse leaves the room to be like yeah also the fact like these people think that doing that will destroy reality but it might not like they might be wrong so it feels like so you know it's like you know, miles is not unjustified but in this one, where it's like, the universe says your mom must die. You could time travel mm -hmm. and fix it, but then everything is fucked. And it's like, that just feels weird in a way that the Spider-Verse thing doesn't. I also think Spider-Verse benefits from not having to resolve that conflict yet. Um, like, I don't think that resolution will be anything super foundational, like changing, like what we're saying, like the, the way the metaphor works and kind of what the movie is trying to say. But, like, I do think it would be crazy if the end of Spider-Verse did end. Like, Beyond the Spider-Verse ends with just the universe exploding and stuff. And Miguel O'Hare is just shaking his head like, yeah, the fucking told him. I don't know what he thought. <laughs> uh, it was a bad idea, kids. Like, the end of the Always Sunny episode with Country Mac, where Country Mac is cool the whole episode. And then at the end, it's like, no, he died because he didn't put his helmet on. You see, what was really cool was being <laughs> safe. And, like, that would be a fun way to end that movie. Um, because, yeah, I guess the, the tricky part of it is, while you're right, the the what each what each story is trying to say and the circumstances specifically of the my dad is not dead yet but he needs to be versus my mom is already dead and I want to fix that are both like in the movie both of them are confronted by a figure who says you cannot go back in time or you cannot change the canon of the thing otherwise reality explodes so like they're just they're doing the exact same yeah. like even though they're doing it in different ways, they're doing the same thing, and it's so weird. Yeah, no, it's... Yeah, no, they, they are basically doing the same thing. It's just, like, I understand the different messages they're going for, but, yeah, the Spider-Man one feels more refreshing and, like, more interesting, whereas this is, like, I don't know. It feels like the same comic book time travel story we've been doing for 60 years or whatever. Yeah. And, like, although... And I, I saw somebody point this out. I can't remember who. Like... This movie is, like, a lot of movies, obviously. It's a lot of scripts together, but it's also, like, you know, it's reminiscent of a lot of movies, including Back to the Future. Except the lesson of Back to the Future is, fuck it, do it, it's good. If you do a good job, you get a better life. Like, <laughs> yeah. so if you, if you it's do weird it right, that then it's fine. Yeah. It's weird that we're back here. And, like, this is, oh, yeah, it's always been my problem with Flashpoint. Is like, 
And I think that is, like, the thing with superheroes and, like, why the Flash just doesn't... Time travel just doesn't work with him. It's like everybody else has a power that it's like Superman can fly. And everybody's like, all right, Superman, use your flying to save as many people as you can. Flash can time travel. Everybody's like, Flash, actually don't use your to save as many people as you can. They're not, like, trying to figure out how to do it safely or, you know, don't do this but do this. It's just like you shouldn't do it because it would make the comics really hard to write. And it just <laughs> sucks. I, I, I never like it. I'm so mad they did in this. I will say um, there's one minor change they could have made to this movie which would have made me love it. Which one? If instead of running super fast, he had to use the cosmic treadmill. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> I don't know where we would get it, but you put that Batman cosmic treadmill in there and I'm all in. I mean, Batman could have it. It could be in the Russian thing. Zod could use it for training. It could be in his ship. There's all kinds of places for <laughs> the cosmic treadmill. Because they also have super speed. It's so funny that like half of the super heroes in these movies do also have super speed. Like Wonder Woman can kind of do it. Superman can do it. All the Kryptonians can do it. Aquaman can do it underwater. And Barry, I do think one of the things that I appreciate about this movie is that they did get a little bit creative with Barry's whole deal. Besides running really fast, he does little tornadoes and stuff and like that was good, but um yeah, it's just at the at, that all just comes at the end of the movie kind of out of nowhere. It's a shame. Yeah, it's like somehow we're like really good at taking out Kryptonians, like no problem. Well, like, so good at it. A Barry who knows what he's doing should be able to do it. It's just like yeah, maybe we should have used some of this on the Russians earlier. Because right now I'm not able to enjoy it. Because there's all yeah. this other shit going on. Um, what else? What do we think of uh, Michael Keaton in this? Uh, he said the line I, I remember. He yeah, he did all the, the thing. lines you remember. He said those lines I remember. That means I love him. Yeah, yeah. the nostalgia made me feel comfortable. I like him. I want to give him a high five. I watched The Homecoming the other day. I said I'd never seen it. Holds up. He's good in it. He's good in all these. Like, yeah. Speaking of things that happened and reminded me of a thing, the because I haven't seen Man of Steel in forever. How the dare origi- you? The, yeah, <laughs> right. Fake the, fan DJ. Yeah, cancel. Yeah, fake fan. Fake fan DJ. Uh, get it trending. Did the original Zod invasion take this long? I feel like it took really long in this movie. Um. Was but it like, that long in Man of Steel? Kind of. Zod shows up and does his little speech on the computers. And then right. he it does abduct Lois and Clark for a little bit. Like, they go on the ship with him, and some time passes. We don't know how much it is, but I think you could say it's like a day passes between when... Because when he shows up, I think Clark just goes to church because he's good and to ask the church right. guy, can I do this? And the church guy's like, yeah, I don't know, man. He goes into the spaceship, fights <laughs> Zod, flies away, and then Zod's like, let's do the end of the movie. But like, there, I feel like there's a little bit of... You could say that... Going to space takes a while. All right, not fair this enough. Much time, I feel like it's like a week. It's like Zod shows up, they're in the apartment, and then they do a lot of adventures, like rescuing yeah. fucking like Supergirl and like all that shit before and we get to the end to of the Russia movie. In a plane, <laughs> yeah, like, pretty far usually. Although maybe in this planet, usually. it's like me- where Mexico is. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. What? Like okay. So Supergirl, Superwoman, whatever. I've never liked that. I hate. I, I, like. I feel like we've done this with some, like, Invisible Girl, Invisible Woman. We never did Super... We did actually do Superboy, Superman, but, like, it just... It's so complicated. Um, like, they should just... There should just be one. They should all start as Superwoman, and then we we go from there. Um, what was the deal with this character? Like, uh, I don't... Uh, I, I genuinely don't understand the reaction to Superwoman in this. What do you mean by the reaction? People were like, oh my god, incredible. This is the star is born. Everyone oh, was that it. a thing? I had yes. no idea. Like, But it's weird. Like Half the reviews will say it. And the other half will be like, seems fine. Doesn't really do too much. Like, I, yeah. It's just, it's tough. It, like, I think I compared this to someone to being like, Adam Warlock is incredible in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I'd be like, was he? He had a couple of lines, I guess. But I, I just... I, I like I liked the actress. The character is absolutely nothing. But then, like, what are you liking then? She's pretty. Okay, yeah, like, hey, but, hey. <laughs> I I just don't I just don't like get it. I feel like the character, it's it's a bad character, kind of, because it's that moment where they're like, "Help us fight General Zod. He's gonna kill people," and she's like, "No." And then she goes and sees him kill people, and she's like, "Oh no, I will help you fight Zod." Like one of the biggest. Wait, what's in, in a movie I've I, seen in a while? I guess um, I, I understand. Yeah, it's it's stupid. That that's incredibly stupid. Yeah, she just changes her mind for no reason because yeah. 
we we got to do the hero's journey. So she has to refuse exactly, the call yeah. and accept it. But we don't understand why those things exist. So it's just completely meaningless. Uh, yep. Yeah, no, you're you're 100 percent right about that. I guess I think I don't. I I wouldn't say I'm one of those people. Like honestly, I did. I was like, uh, I was like, she seems fine. Like I don't know, the character's nothing, but the actress seemed cool. Um, mm. But I. I do feel there is, like, a kernel of, like... Maybe it's because it's the only truly new and interesting thing in the timeline. But mm. it did feel like you get to that and you're like, oh, there's something here. They're not mm. doing it, but there's something. Yeah, I guess, too, part of it for me was I did hear about, like, with the expectations being set very high for this character. You get to the movie and you're like, oh, yeah, right. We got to get Supergirl soon. This movie's over. And <laughs> then they show up and, yeah, leave, come back, and then it's pretty much done. Screaming yeah. sound a lot, a lot of screaming. I think people um, are mistaking their intense boredom in the rest <laughs> of the movie, and then the slight like excitement and interest of like, oh, this is something that's not been in another movie. Oh, what's up with this? For like an incredible performance, which is understandable because the rest of the movie is so boring. Uh, <laughs> but well, not all of it. Like you heard my thing at the beginning. Vast wastelands of nothing, but there are sparks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't know. I feel like that might be the reaction of just like, it's the one like idea the movie has that's kind of like, that's something. Of course, then yeah, it says that. that it's an immutable fact that women are worse than men. And that's what it uses this character to say. And I'm like, I don't, I don't love that. <laughs> I mean, worse at not getting stabbed, apparently. That's the main way they get right. got in, these, <laughs> in this movie specifically. Right. Well, it's just that, you know, if you if you need if there's something really important that needs to happen, you should always go with the man over the woman because the woman won't be able to do it. You goddamn right. I mean, we'll never know because we had some Batman, but we never got that Batgirl movie. That's so true. We'll never know if she actually mm -hmm. sweet and not flown her plane directly in the Zod's plane for no reason. <laughs> 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 I um I was gonna say I do think it's funny. I if there is one thing about Sasha Kali, she seems cool. I, I think it's so funny that she's doing all the press for this movie because Michael Keaton is I busy. know. Michael uh, she's all they got. Michael Keaton is tired and we can't let Ezra Miller out of the containment zone. <laughs> it's so funny. And I've seen General Zod do a fair amount of press too. I don't know if it's for this and something else he's working on. <laughs> Even though his like, interviews are like, yeah, I don't know. This character isn't really much of anything and I also don't do anything in this movie. So I didn't really like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. It really is like he just goes, hey, Man of Steel fans, don't like this movie, okay? I don't like it, and I'm from Man of Steel, so. Yeah, but I also didn't really like Man of Steel, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, man, I didn't like, yeah, it's, I, I do wish, on one hand, I do think this, it would have been interesting if they had to do, like, actual interviews, uh, but on the other hand, they're so lucky that there's no late night TV and that that circuit doesn't exist right uh, now. I know, I know, could have mined it for so much gold. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was your favorite part of this movie? My favorite part? Oh, gosh. I think... I, I honestly, I really like it when young Barry gets his powers and is, like, doing all this stuff and, like, falls, like, naked through the floor. Like, I actually thought all that stuff worked. Yeah, I agree. Like, th those were bits and comedic beats that I'm like, I enjoy this. And, like, that that struggle. Because, like, yeah, I, like, again, like, I liked they wrote Ezra a struggle Miller, in between the two Barrys and it worked. I liked when the character played by Ezra Miller exposed himself to a minor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like insane mm. just insane uh, uh, i remember uh, that was they made like a promotional comic or something that had that image in it and it came out right around the same time as some of the allegations i don't remember when but like it was like is this what the movie is guys because that's not gonna work and it's not really what the movie is but it is in there and it's uh it's, it's pretty crazy I mean, if you look at the marketing, the movie's mostly Batman. But yeah. It's, it's got a little bit of that. Uh, my favorite part was when uh, the weird guy in Young Barry's apartment had an Eric Stoltz tattoo. Yeah, I wonder if people will get that tattoo in real life. <laughs> I wish... That's the thing. I wish this movie had enough super fans for that. Because if I ever saw someone with that tattoo in real life, I'd be like, oh, this guy's cool. Uh, this but now I'd be like, it. who is this? Who are you, sir? Uh, I think, yeah, I like... I really did like the baby shower bit, but I I think my favorite my favorite bit bit was I really liked Michael Keaton's introduction, like old man vagrant Michael Keaton doing karate and stuff. His little spaghetti thing I thought was good. I also think I like that explanation of the multiverse thing. Movies are really yeah. good at this now. 
doing a scene where a character picks up a thing and goes, this is the multiverse. It's never, like, coherent or, like, like it doesn't actually make any sense. And a lot of times it doesn't, like, fit with what the movie's actually doing. But I always leave that scene going, oh, I think I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I think I know how they can solve this problem. Loki just put some salt in a salad, and apparently that's also the multiverse. <laughs> All right. oh, whatever. Good point, Loki. Um, did you have a favorite individual joke? I feel like I already said. Yeah, I, I feel know. like I already said mine too. Okay, well, I had one, but I didn't say it. Um, okay, yeah. And it can't, I didn't think it could be my favorite moment of the movie. I died when young Barry turned his head to old Barry. Revealing that the cowl still doesn't turn and it made a goofy smushed up face. I thought that was so funny. Like, I might, I, and my theater loved that moment too. Oh, and I think, yeah, it wasn't too bad. I like, I don't know what it is. There were just some, some of the comedy beats in this were pretty good. When, oh. when young Barry got shot, <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> I did. It's like when he was like, what would make you think we can't get shot? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like right. actually, yeah, great point. Why would he think that? That some of those bits were like where where old Barry to young Barry was like, "What are you doing, dude?" With like, like I said, the the cousin's dinner line. I was like, "That's pretty funny." I uh, yeah, I liked it. I thought it was good. Um, uh, I, I like actually the, the I a, comedy. I have a quick thing about roughly around the scene where young Barry gets shot, but it's not about the comedy. It's just this is a this is like one of the most ni- minor nitpick I could possibly have. Uh huh. So, uh, they do, uh, the guy says the thing that happened before, the, 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 the thing that I remember, so I clap. Um, oh, yeah. Michael Key and Batman is like, how much do you weigh, um, so that he can figure out how to explode them up into the surface. And Barry gives an answer, which I forget the precise numbers, but I remember doing the math at the time and being like, wait, so Superwoman at this moment weighs 80 pounds? She's like mm. a fully grown average height woman who weighs 80 pounds. Well, but she's all like emaciated and like heat, like sun. Yeah, no, no red sun, you know. Like, like that's uh, well, but the, here's the thing, though. Assuming that when she bulks up, like the sun hits her and she's good again, um, that she becomes the minimum uh, average, like the minimum, like healthy weight for a person of her age and, and height, right? That would mean she gained 50% of her body mass when the sun hit her. And the Kryptonians, right? Yeah. Why Some not? Some cells. You know how the mitochondria in a, in a, in a human cell is the powerhouse? Well, for them, it's the uh, chloroform or something, so... Look, that I'm means. just I'm just saying she does not look fifty percent larger when mm. she bulks up. All right, I'll give that to you. That's a, that's a good nitpick. I've always wondered seeing that. Like, I think it's funny that we see her whole costume like, like in a pile next to her. How did she put it on? <laughs> yeah, right. She does it never made speed. sense with. Well, right, but it never made sense with Superman. Is it really stretchy? Is there a zipper we've never seen? It's just such a like. It's so funny that. Because we never saw the Superman costume off of Superman. It's always funny that these are like little footy pajama costumes, too. Where, like, <laughs> you can see the little feet dangling from the legs. It's like, what are you doing with that, man? Well, she, <laughs> Isn't it just have shoes? It's, um, just like Superman is also super fast. Uh, they could also do the phasing thing, so they just phase oh, into the Oh, that's true. Costume. That would make sense. What do you think of the Flash costume in this? It's, it's fine. It's weird. It's a weird costume. On one hand, I think it looked good. On the other hand... Sometimes it looked weird. This butt made that look weird. But on the other hand, that's what these are supposed to do, I guess. So, yeah, every time Nando saw that, he just had a little thought balloon that went up and said, stupid, sexy Ezra Miller. <laughs> Honestly, it is kind of like that. Like, uh, Yeah, that Flanders thing. Um, who is the worst bit of this movie, you guys? Don't all jump in at once. I, I was going to say, say the I'm, exact oh. same thing that we haven't talked about yet. But. <laughs> I'd have to imagine that's everyone's well, least favorite part. according to my theater that I was in, it's everyone's favorite part. Yeah, I mean, oh my, my God, wait, are you serious? Too, although we saw it so early that I do think it was more surprising and, like, people were, like, really into it. I think no, if I saw it today, I, people would be a little, like, confused. My theater went nuts. My theater was very confused. Like, there was an audible, like, what? Well, like, I, I, I honestly... Oh, wait, no, sorry. Uh, we might be talking about very slightly different things. Oh, okay. yeah, we are talking about different things. I'm talking about the whole scene with the thing. Yeah, I'm talking well, about the whole thing. Not just the end. Wait, we're not talking about, like, the... I'm just going to say it. The, the, the CGI Nick Cage monster? Oh, no, that... Yeah, that, that well, is what we're talking about. I thought you were talking or... about... 
Yeah, we're talking about all of it though, like Christopher Reeve, yeah, George yeah, yeah. Reeve, yeah, all of them. yeah, 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 yeah. That's what okay, sure, 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 we're sure. going nuts for. And all right, let's like, go through really one going by one. nuts. They're like, go- really they went nuts for Christopher Reeve, and I looked around at the age of this audience and was like, none of you have seen these movies. What are you doing? Yeah, my mine was left with just like indifference. It's like did not give a fuck. That's so weird. Oh, the, these kids were kids, so they also didn't know what that was. It's weird how like they did those ones, right? Let's make a list of all the ones we see. First one's George Reeve, right? Yeah. The, or, like, George Reeves. George Reeves, yes. And like I'm so bad Reeves. at this. Yeah. Well, it's, George Reeves. it's really weird that this has happened. It's so weird. George Reeves and Adam West we see very, very briefly in like footage that you could convince me is from their cartoon. Or like from their shows. I think the Adam West footage is just archival footage from the show. Yeah. The George Reeves one I do think, or George Reeves one is... A recreation, but nobody cares. Yeah, and they also um, put a Jay Garrick in there somehow. So that bit was extra tough. Apparently, people thought, and I thought, having watched it and knowing it was supposed to be this guy, I thought that was one of the guys from Flash. It's not, um, which is confusing because it looks exactly like the actor, and it's not the one who plays Flash or his dad, who was the Flash on the '90s show. It's another character who shows up in the second season, turns out to be a villain, but dresses like that and like has the classic Jay Garrick costume. Um, really weird choice. Also, like, he's doing Speed Force stuff. Why is that okay? Wait, is he? Oh, he's running in the center of his Coliseum. I assume that means you're doing Speed Force stuff. Oh, I just thought he was, I don't know, I didn't even consider that. I was just like, yeah, it's a guy, whatever. Like, I considered he was doing Speed Force. If he was just, like, in, if it was, like, the other characters we meet who are just, like, in their world seeing a big crisis tear open up or something, I'd be like, oh, well. But this is like, yeah, he's they just the smile center. at us. Yeah, well, the smile, and then they look a little concerned. Yeah. Um, so we see him. <laughs> yeah, that bit's weird. I really didn't like Teddy Sears in that. I mean, it's not him, but I didn't like that whole bit. Um, then we see the George Reeves, oh, sorry, Christopher, Christopher Reeve, Reeve bit. Yeah. Now, okay. What were yeah. your guys' thoughts? Uh, what are we doing? How has it come to this? I, I, I made very upset by what I'm watching on screen. My thoughts were, this man has been dead for so long, and... You're resurrecting his shambling corpse so people will clap on a screen. I hate this. Yeah, See, like, agreed. For me, I think I was. My question was more, or my reaction was more like, "Is he just going to stand there this whole time? Like, <laughs> <laughs> is yeah. he going to come?" talk to us or otherwise i don't see why we did this in computers i assume you guys have footage of him just standing around in the superman costume right i that i don't understand i understand that helen slater flying next to him that was never a thing we have footage of so like if they right. got her permission to do it and just digitally added her into a clip with sure that makes sense and it's like i feel like there was always some funky bullshit with why she was supposed to be in his universe, but then her movie bombed or something, so she wasn't, so whatever. But, um, yeah, I, I do think, like, for all the work and all the hubbub, it, you get nothing. Yeah. yeah. That, it's so that weird, is, like, yeah, I as much know. as I hate... Sorry, you go, you go. I just say, as much as I hate CGI Tarkin, at least that scene is, like, a scene where a mouth moves, so it can't just be a picture <laughs> of him. But with this, it could just be a picture of him. Yeah, that's, that's the other thing. It's like, this happens... For no, like, I, I've been making jokes about, you know, it's there so that you could look at it and say, that's the thing I know and clap. But, like, this exists for no other reason than that. It's literally the only reason it's in the movie. It adds nothing. It contributes nothing. It's, it's just there so you'll clap. Yeah. And, like, I think that could work if what we were seeing was that all the universes were broken or something. Like, in, we, we saw the clip from Justice League where they all fight Steppenwolf or something, but in Superman's place, it's Nick Cage or something. And this is like right. signaling to Barry that something is wrong. The other way you could do it is you have... But the thing that this movie doesn't do that I think is like truly baffling is show the other guys that we've had since. Brandon hey. Ralph definitely would have done it. I, I don't believe he said no. Like Tom Welling, all of them seem so re- willing to do it because they did it like four years ago because they did crisis on infinite earths on the show so like if right. we did a thing where we got every single version of superman on screen for a second and we threw nicholas cage in it'd be like oh cute and him but instead it's like we went we did a b d x and then the <laughs> letter one like it's none of it <laughs> so, so incohesive and um 
Yeah. What do we think of Nick Cage's one? Uh, I wanted to refer to Diggins as the podcast's Nick Cage expert. Okay. Well, here's the thing. This was the excitement of seeing Nicholas Cage in the role he's always wanted to do uh, was mitigated for me by two factors. Uh-huh. Factor number one was that Nando told us the rumor that he would be in it doing this uh, weeks ago, so I was already kind of expecting it. I don't think it. I said it in those yeah. words, all those words. You said that there was a rumor that there was some kind of appearance of the Nick Cage Superman fighting the giant spider. Oh, maybe I did say that. I, I think you more put it in, in terms of there's something in there that Diggins is going to love. No, you, and you, then we were like, you directly said that, I recall. Oh, uh, okay. Specifically. This was this was a while ago, but I remember things. Oh. I mean, I don't feel bad about it because the director also said it in an interview like the day after the movie came out. But go on. Yeah, I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying this is a thing that happened that mitigated it for me. Um, the second thing is that rather than Nicolas Cage, like we've been lying to you, Nicolas Cage is not in this movie. What is in this movie is a horrific Frankenstein plastic man <laughs> who has the vague appearance of a young Nick Cage and stares soullessly into your eyes. <laughs> I think it looked uh, better than the Christopher Reeve one. Well, that's not uh, part agreed. Of it. Yeah, but yeah, it's pretty weird. Did people in your theater? D- did you guys see people around you that were like, "What?" Or did yeah, everybody people, was everybody in on it? No, the people in my immediate vicinity were so confused; they had no idea what was going on. Because uh, it's a pretty deep cut. It's a that shot is for like seven people, and we're three of them. Well, yeah. here's the funny thing about that, DJ. I have a friend who went to see this movie at the Smith at the at the theater oh. Kevin Smith owns at the showing that Kevin oh, Smith man. was at. Oh my god! <laughs> so uh, it was for the- it was for that showing and no one else. Yeah, like. Yeah, like I like I said, if this was every Superman, I'd actually probably love this. Or if he if he came out and said a word, then I'd love it too. Like, but I just don't. I don't know. It just is so weird. Also, can like can does Christopher Reeve Superman now know multiverse stuff in his universe? I guess that's bad. That seems bad. <gasps> like, because he already went back in time to save. Lois in the first movie. Yeah, by flying around the What the fuck are we doing Earth? here? That is like, true. <laughs> what is going on? These movies started with the time travel movie. And they've just been, just been so confused about that no, ever since. It's okay. That's the only woman in the DC universe who wasn't supposed to die. That's true. Oh, man. Like, yeah. Have you guys seen any of the five other times this has happened in the last ten years? Uh, over various pieces of DC media. What, that Christopher Reeve has showed up? No. Uh, where a character has looked into the multiverse and seen different versions of characters from shows. <laughs> oh, no. What other times? Oh, they that? love it. So the Flash show has done it twice. Um, theirs was, like, I want to say... Oh, I can't remember. For end of the first season had something like this, where they went back in time... Or, like, ran through the time stream or something. And Flash just did Flashpoint and has seen all kinds of versions of stuff. And also, like I said... They did Crisis on Infinite Earth, so, like, they went to Tom Welling's show, Smallville. Like, they went to a Brandon Routh universe and met him. But the really interesting one is earlier this year, Titans did this. Um, Titans? So going? It just ended. Um, So, like, I know. And, and, like, apparently everyone, then they, everybody says this about every single show. It got good, so we actually should watch it. And I don't believe them, but that's what they say. Um... In this, so spoilers for Flash, or for, not Flash, Jesus, for, um, uh... Titans? This show. Titans. This is a scene <laughs> where Beast Boy, who's kind of been going all... His powers have been wigging out, he's been kind of passing out and, like, waking up, and everybody's dead around him. Like, so his powers are on Fritz. He taps into the cosmic force of life in that universe called the Red, which connects all living things, the same way the green connects all... Well, like, connects all animal things, the same way green connects all plants. And, um sees the different versions of that throughout the multiverse, which include, like, a clip of Shazam and Grant Gustin and he goes to the Stargirl show for a second. And there's even a bit, like, if you go about halfway through this, you see him just having a bit where he stands around and looks as some, like, portals open and show him the Swamp Thing show or Teen Titans Go, the cartoon show. There's even a bit where, like, Grant Morrison is there looking at Beast Boy and going, like, that's weird. Like, 
this was like a maybe maybe three months ago. I think this happened in the show. Oh. Like they gotta stop doing this. It becomes way less special if you do it every single time. But I mean, they can't help themselves, right? That's that's ultimately the problem. Like, but like for all their faults, Marvel hasn't done this yet. You know, like they haven't had a thing where they go and look in the past and see Lou Ferrigno Hulk. I think they will eventually, right? But like, they have managed to really like kind of I don't know hold everybody like. There is a force, it seems, at the top of this going, nobody do that yet. We only get to do it once before people get tired of it. And cool. there just was no guy for that in DC, so they all did it. It's it's really insane. Um, because, yeah, it sucks. Um, what else was weird about this? Um, it was weird that it was in the movie. Like, you know what was weird? Like... Barry sees that and he gets what's going on immediately. Not like, oh god, yeah. like it, it, it's just like, see, the multiverses are crashing together. It's like, oh, well, you picked up on that pretty quick. Yeah, I'd be like, I guess I would you're really smart. Need someone to stand there and explain it to me with spaghettis. I don't know. This wouldn't I make guess, sense. I guess when they started crashing together, I'd be like, I mean, that seems bad. Uh, yeah, that seems like it's not good. That's uh, a good but point. Also. I wouldn't know what it, was going on. In 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 Barry's universe, is he like in his universe is Nick Cage an actor? So he's looking at that would be like, oh my god, Nick Cage is Superman in that universe. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, we, we've all collectively agreed to ignore when celebrities are in movies that are set in the normal world, and it's like, That's does that point. celebrity exist in this world? And you're like, don't just don't think about it. But that might be a cool like thing <laughs> to explore. Yeah. I mean, I think you could get away with it with Clooney because they feel like they did it the best in that Oceans movie where they're like, you kind of look like Julia Roberts. Let's use that as part of the movie. But um, yeah, like I feel like if Barry, if if at the very end, Barry Allen had said George Clooney, I'd be like, yeah, whatever. I guess it's George Clooney in this universe. I, I would have loved that. Um, no, I'm Eric Stoltz. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Eric Stoltz looks like in this universe. Uh yeah. So, hey, here is, here's a larger question for you guys that I really feel like is de deserves to be asked. Okay. Other than referencing things that happen in Flashpoint. So, like, uh -huh. I'm removing that as a valid reason before I ask this question. This is going to be tough. What, what was the point of having few, of present Barry lose his powers? What did that accomplish? Uh, they, they had to do the experiment from... Oh, right, that was part of that. I don't know. I mean, like... It let because that's the other weird thing about this movie. Speaking of Flashpoint and like the connections to Flashpoint and not to Flashpoint, this two Barrys thing is not in Flashpoint. Like there's no Barry goes back in time, like actually, and goes back in time, not to a different universe. So th you don't have any of this stuff. He does lose his powers, but there's no like teaching the other one how to do it. I guess like what you get out of it is you get a Barry learning to use the superpowers without another Barry showing him how to do that. So, like, you get some of the wacky misadventures of Flash and Flash. But, well, like, but like, from a story perspective, nothing. The mistakes that young Barry makes, though, are all just... He doesn't let Barry finish explaining and just goes and does the thing as soon as he hears about it. And sure, I guess, Barry not having powers doesn't stop that from happening. I guess if Barry had powers, they could have gotten Supergirl in a minute. Like, no problem. But without powers, that becomes like a... I mean, it's still not very hard, but it's something that they have to work at. Um, I like. I still. I don't think he could have killed Zod or anything. Like, and it doesn't seem well, like he, he wanted to. He had his powers when Zod, right. when they fought Zod, so he definitely couldn't have. Like, and I also think like I don't just don't understand. At certain points, they're kind of clever with super speed stuff or whatever, like with the microwave thing. But also, it's like I just don't think the Flash is very good at being the Flash in these movies. Like, just do like I like. I don't know. It's There's something about the way he's using his powers to fight one guy at a time. Just go stab Zod. You're the guy. <laughs> this is your job. Why are you making her do it? Why is Batman even here? Like, yeah, Just go steal the blade that Zod has that can stab Kryptonians for some reason and stab him yeah. with it. Yeah, he doesn't know you're around yet. You get one shot at this, but like, use it. Don't all land and pose together and then fucking split up. Because like, it does feel like at the end... There is this, like, Batman, fly around in your jet and distract them. But, like, it's kind of clear, like, Batman can't really help. When he fights the one Kryptonian, 
and it mostly doesn't work. I'm like, yeah, I know. That's Batman. This isn't going to work. <laughs> but um, when, like, Supergirl, Superwoman is fighting Zod, and Barry and Barry are just like, all right, here's the plan. Let's go. You do a big spin, and I'll do I'm like, fucking, you didn't have this conversation already? Like, you're on the battlefield. This has to be urgent. It's not, there's no urgency. It's just this very, like, kind of, I don't know. It's it's weirdly slow. Also, apparently, do you know the Barbie Girl song is apparently supposed to be in the movie, but goes cut? Oh, that's why they reference it? Yeah. Which oh. makes sense, because I bet it just wasn't supposed to release within a month of the Barbie movie. Yeah. Oh. And, uh, yeah. Apple was probably a little testy about that, but. Uh, oh, okay, I, have, I have one more weird thing. Um, yeah. Remember? When Barry is telling his point of view of uh, Man of Steel in the original timeline. And oh, he's like, yeah, that is yeah. so weird. He's like, yeah, I had powers, but I just got them. I wasn't good at them yet. I saved one boy, but I didn't save his dad. And I'm really sad about how I didn't save everybody. And then later we see the scene of both of those guys dying in the new timeline. Yeah. And it's like, it doesn't come up or matter at all. It's just like, we just told that story for no real reason. Like, yeah, okay, thematic reasons, whatever. You couldn't save everybody. But, like, they put such an emphasis on, I wanted to save these two guys, and I only saved yeah. one of them. And then later we see those two guys, and it's just like we did that for no reason. <laughs> the, the, also, we just wanted uh, we just wanted to check in with them again. All right, back to the fight. Also, like when Barry, like Barry, goes back in time, does all this shit, trying to save his mom, finds out that this universe is like like the the big discovery at the end is the universe is marked for dead. Like this is one that Zod's gonna kill no matter what. Batman is way too cool with that, and like. He dies and is like, no, just don't, don't even try to save us. Yeah, just let know, every man. human being on this planet die. It doesn't even fucking yeah. matter. Who cares? It's, especially because Batman was the. This is the Batman that was like, it's good that you went back in time to save your mom. I would have done that if I could. Like, I get the Bruce Wayne. Like that. That one has a different opinion. The one from the Snyder movies, but like Keaton, it's like he should be a little bummed that he died and the whole world is gonna be fucked. Did you know that originally... because oh, this, like, jabroni. Originally, him and Superwoman were supposed to merge into the timeline and, like, be part of the movies from now on? Well, they cut that? Yeah, because that was the scene they... The first scene they filmed for this movie was them meeting him outside the courthouse, and that would have been the big surprise, is he would have opened the car door and Michael Keaton comes out, and then he's like, you're not supposed to be here, and then Superman... Co- like, all the behind-the-scenes shots of Supergirl are that, of her on the wire in front of the courthouse. And uh, yeah, apparently they got rid of it because they like the Clooney bit. I don't know. Well, and nothing wound up mattering, right? Yeah, I kind of like that's how, the whole how rub with this movie. Nothing matters. Is. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a bummer. No, I it's mean, good. I liked it. I mean, nothing matters, right? I'm like, fuck it. Who exactly. cares? That's the message of the movie. Nothing matters. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's weird. Um. Okay. Here's a question: Is this movie woke? Oh, uh, let's see. No, because uh, women dying is central and good, <laughs> according and, to this movie. And women being less good than men. Yeah, so no, um, not well. Uh, uh, oh, man, I'm so torn about the presence of Ezra Miller and whether it makes this movie woke or not. Exactly. On the yeah, one that... hand, Ezra Miller is non-binary, right? And even acknowledging that people who are non-binary exist is woke. Right. Okay. On the other hand, uh, people are trying to cancel Ezra Miller <laughs> and fighting back against cancellation is not woke. That's right. So it's like, where do we fall on this, you guys? Somebody call Jordan think... Peterson and ask him how we feel about or- Ezra Miller. <laughs> I think at the heart of this movie, the movie, because let's talk about Ezra Miller, let's talk about the movie, the movie is not woke. Um, I'm going to say, is the movie woke or not? The movie's kind of woke, obviously, because super woman is instead of superman is in it it's kind of not woke though because like well hmm you know what else is kind of like barry's some vaguely hispanic in these movies i don't think it's ever been like actually quantified but like that's pretty woke honestly and i kind of keep forgetting oh, about that yeah. but they like speak spanish in that yeah, house his, to each other his mom is hispanic clearly yeah uh like... <laughs> yeah yeah you're right the office space guy probably isn't isn't that <laughs> I mean, maybe a little bit, but that's what he's known for. The actress is from Spain. Gotcha. Um, So, I don't know. I mean, presumably that's what she's meant to be in the movie also. She's supposed to be Spanish. Um, Yeah. 
So that's another thing. So we have a character who speaks a language that's not English, which is woke. But right. it's important to the structure of the universe that that uh, character be punished for their non-English speaking by dying, which is not woke. Right. And, like, you know, we have Supergirl played by, uh, you know, a person with uh, some sort of something or other going she's, on. I'm she's Googling Latina. it. I'm Googling it. Colombian descent. There we go. Yeah, she's Latina. Uh, and she's where our, you know, classic big giant white guy used to be. So that means mm-hmm. that's pretty woke. But then again, like I said, Nando, this movie proves that that superwoman is inferior to our big white, like, uh, man Superman. Yeah. What about how I, Barry Allen puts a baby in a microwave? We calling that woke or not woke? Well, <laughs> I feel like that I, one's a wash. Here, yeah. Well, here here's the baby thing for you that I think seals it. Uh, this movie kills a baby in Baby Superman, so woke. Oh, that's true. We kill but, Baby Superman. That's woke. But the villain kills the baby, yeah. and we're supposed to realize uh, it's a horrible uh, thing he's uh, done uh, 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 that makes him deserving of death. Yeah. You're right. So not woke. So not woke. Not woke. I'm going to say not woke also. I think not woke. I feel really good about not woke. Yeah. Wait, no, it's woke. It's very woke. What are we talking about? <laughs> this movie's insanely woke by all the standards that people set. Uh, that there are people in it who aren't white? Yeah. Uh, Iris <laughs> alone makes the movie like 50% more woke <laughs> than these movies would usually. Like, there's no way Ben Shapiro didn't get mad at that if he gave a shit about this movie. Oh, yeah. That would be something actually, he'd cry about. Actually, you're right, Nando. The most important metric of all uh, proves that it's woke, which is that yeah. it, it didn't do well financially, which means that it's woke oh, because it proves true. that if you go woke, you go broke. That's true. Wait, so Elemental was also woke? Yeah. Absolutely. It was about race mixing, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's something that is back up for debate. So, yeah. <laughs> Those waters and those fires, man. Yeah. Well, you remember, it's just DJ, too different. When the Mario movie hadn't come out yet and hadn't made all that <laughs> money, it was woke. But then when it made a lot of money, it wasn't woke, thus proving that audiences love things that aren't woke. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's too much, man. Too much. Here's a question. I think we all know the answer, but this was the question before the movie came out. Will we ever see any of these characters again? Absolutely not. <laughs> There's no way. Well, yeah, hold on. I've- uh, we will see Aquaman again because he has a movie coming out. Will we, though? We haven't seen a trailer for that yet. Mm. I still think they will release it because I don't think it, it's... I think if it was going to be a tax write-off, we'd know by now. But, like, it feels weird that we haven't seen anything for that. And yet we got a Craven trailer today, a Marvel's trailer, like, a month and a half ago. I Where guess it this? depends on if Vin Diesel can use his vast influence to squash the Aquaman movie. Oh, my God. Imagine... Uh, Vin Diesel's getting CGI replaced in to take the place of Patrick Wilson or something. That movie comes out in like, yeah, it's December this year. I mean, maybe it'll be good. Who knows? We'll We'll see what Tom says. Saying December of a year is saying like, we're going to try to do it this year. Yeah. Is it like the Tom Cruise thing is so funny. Isn't that funny? I don't get it. I mean, I guess you explained it with the Green Lantern. Yeah, it's because it's going to be a Green Lantern probably or something. (laughs) Makes all the sense in the world. Oh, God. But also, like, if you're Tom Cruise, don't you just go, like, I don't know, I loved it. The greatest movie ever made. <laughs> just the praise was so high. Maybe uh, maybe the ghost of L. Ron Hubbard uh, had commanded uh, all the Scientologists that Ezra Miller was their new prophet. He's the new mm. Messiah. Because that is the thing Ezra Miller believes about themselves, that there's some Apparently. kind of Messiah or prophet. Ooh, oh, yeah. cool. Maybe there's something, maybe something about what Zod does in this movie is inherently Scientology. Like, it's like Jesus getting crucified on the cross and, like, Tom Cruise just saw that and was like, oh, that, that, that lady was stabbed by the Omega Sword, just like in my Bible. And uh, he <laughs> loved it so much. I don't know. Oh, God. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, yeah, anything else about this? <laughs> Probably not, right? No, I, I think I tapped the well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't, oh, don't see it. Just wait for it to be on Max in two weeks. It, I mean, honestly, <laughs> Just wait. like even then, only if you're really curious. If you're like, I could take it or leave it, then don't watch it. I think the the scenes that are good are fun. I think as a movie, it's fun. Just end it after like two hours or whatever. Cut that last bit right out. Cut, cut, cut. <laughs> and it, if, if you're watching at home, you can just do that. You just go do something else. Stop the movie. Oh, it's done. Just... 
Whatever. Yeah, honestly, there's a cut of this movie that is the insane cut, but a cut where Supergirl gets stabbed, Batman explodes, Barry goes, no credits. And then <laughs> it's honestly a more thought-provoking version of this movie. And that's the end of the DCEU. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? That's what it should be. I like that. Um, do you guys want to oh, get to our man. classic segment? Yeah. Um, so what do you have to recommend, DJ? What do you got? Uh, I started watching the uh, Arnold's miniseries on Netflix. Are you guys familiar with this? Is this Fubar or is Arnold this a miniseries? Schwarzenegger? No. Yeah, no, no, no. This is a uh, like docu series about okay. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, I haven't seen this. No. I, I I started watching it. It's like interesting enough because I, I said this before. I'll like watch any documentary that Netflix like throws in front in front of my face. Um, I don't know what kind of deal he got. Where yeah, I was like this in Fubar. But there's three episodes, part one, the athlete, part two, the actor, and part three, the American. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's like, like I said, I, I got like three quarters of episode one. I just haven't finished it because I haven't had time, but like not interesting. But like, I don't know, man. I like, I don't know. Arnold Schwarzenegger at one point was like the biggest actor like in America. It's like it was so bankable. Oh, yeah. And like, he's, you know, he's the only character in a bat. He's the only villain in a Batman movie that got billing above Batman. Yeah. Right. Like, so, uh, yeah, I didn't watch exactly right about that guy. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't have more. It was like kind of a light week and, uh, like Father's Day and such, but, uh, uh, I don't know. Check that out. This is Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's got a doc series on Netflix. Good for that guy. Uh, yeah. So light week. That's all I got. Cool. Dig in. Dig in. you. Uh, yeah, I watched a movie uh, this past week. Uh, it's a it's an older movie. Uh, it's from 1940 called uh, The Shop Around the Corner. Uh, it stars uh, Jimmy Stewart and Margaret Sullivan. It's about uh, uh, they're two employees who work in a just like a they're like salespeople in like a leather goods store or something. Uh, it's not that important what the store is. Um, and they hate each other, but unbeknownst to them, they have been pen pals for a while through which they have fallen in love. Uh, and so it's sort of like a comedy of errors of like them not realizing this. And then Jimmy Stewart finds out, but uh, Margaret Sullivan still doesn't know. And it's like this whole back and forth. It's very, it's a very funny romantic comedy. Um, like, uh, despite its age, it, it had me, uh, it had me busting a gut with some scenes. Uh, but... The most important thing for my esteemed co-hosts uh, oh. about this movie oh. would be that it actually served as the basis for a remake that has come out in our lifetimes. Uh, can you guess? Uh, it is a loose remake, so don't let the fact that... So, like, don't try to think of that exact plot. Try to think more of, like, the idea of that plot. Can you guess what movie was a remake of this one that you two definitely know? I... Real quick, one more time. What's the plot? Pen Pals Fall in Love? They're pen pals, they fall in love, but they also know each other in real life without knowing that they're pen pals and hate each other. Is it like the parent trap? No. Um, oh god, I mean this sounds super familiar. You're thinking, like, you're thinking correctly in that it's an older movie. Okay. Um, I mean, I've never seen You've Got Mail. Is that what this movie is? Yes, You've Got Mail is a remake of Shop Around the Corner. Oh, Oh, how about that? Nice. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a very funny movie. Uh, it is available to stream probably. If I had to guess, uh, why don't I just check that right now? I probably should. Criterion before, Collection. I probably should have done that before this moment. It is. Uh, you can rent it for cheap on YouTube or Apple TV or any of the other places where you can rent movies. Um, but yeah, that's my rec. What about you, Nando? Uh, I I'm gonna recommend. So I've been play, I watched a couple of little movies and shows. Uh, finished the great, still love it. Uh, third season's weird, but it's good. Um, Can't believe they actually included her fucking that horse. <laughs> it's a lot. There's a lot of horse fucking in it. It's it's a big part of the show. Um, <laughs> but she's it's mostly big, horse fucking by the end. It's yeah. It's there's so much stuff about. I I had no idea how what the actual story was before. Because I know I know nothing about Catherine the Great. So then when I started watching the show, I was like, well, I want to know less than nothing so I cannot be completely spoiled by the, for the show. And then once I get caught up, I'll start reading the history. And now I'm caught up and it's not even close. It's really <laughs> interesting. It's almost like a like 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 Catherine the Great, like fan fiction written by Catherine the Great or something like that. Like it's very interesting. Um, and it's interesting how a lot of the things between her, like the dynamic between her and Peter – some things you're like, no, this is reverse. He did this, she did that. But anyway, I think the show's quite good. 
Um, and it's a great case for Nicholas Holt being like a really, really interesting actor and why part of the Superman, the, the rumors that he's testing for Superman this week, I'm like, fuck it, let's try it. He's so weird. I'd love to see it. Um, so watch that. I watched a movie this week that I didn't love um, called uh, Polite Society. I didn't oh. hate it, but it's... Have you heard of it? Yeah, I meant to go see it when it was in theaters, but I, I missed it. Well, now it's on Peacock, so that's great. But it's weird because it's like there's a... like It's hard to explain, but the movie's kind of about Somehow a kid. Somehow Palpatine little, has returned. That's right. Yeah, it's about a little girl who's like, oh, my, my sister's leaving me. She's getting married to a handsome man, and I'm so mad about that. I'm losing my best friend. And it's all visualized through, like, karate and stuff because she is obsessed with movie stunts. She wants to be a stunt performer. And all that stuff's pretty fun to watch and, and pretty good. Um, the problem is, like, kind of like Flash. It ends in a way that's like, I don't think you know what you're about, movie. This is... We did the opposite of what the movie should do and not in what seems like an intentional way. It's just really, really weird. Um... That being said, it was fine. I don't know. I didn't love it, didn't hate it. Um, but the big thing for us this weekend was um, Hannah and I realized that there was on PlayStation Store a new Katamari game out. So I guess they've been oh. remaking them or putting them onto PlayStation. We had a really good time a couple, maybe a year ago, finding what was the current, like most recent PlayStation Katamari game. Um, so this is, Kat I think it's called Katamari Reroll 2 or something. Um, plus, uh, what is it called? Katamari, Katamari Reroll plus Royal Reverie. Um, so it's just like on PlayStation and it's, an, it's more Katamari stuff if you like that. And I love those games. So it's a real good time. Um, so if you've ever, if you ever liked those as a kid and you're like, or, or as an adult, but like if you, if that's a game from your childhood that you remember, you're like, this would be fun to pick up again. Uh, it is. And, um, they also, this this one does a bunch of other mechanics that are weird. Not like you have to do different things with the ball to make it different. Like, it doesn't feel different to play, except it's like, this is the speed level where you're on a racetrack. And uh, so it's it's it feels like enough of a new thing that I don't feel dumb playing, doing essentially the same thing as I did in the original game. Um, so, yeah, that's my, that's my other recommendation. Uh... What are we doing next week, fellas? Extraction 2? <sighs> are we, though? Are we? Is, I haven't heard anything what? about it. Yeah, but we did Extraction I, 1. I feel like we have to. I heard but, one person I know in real life say that their brother watched it and he thought it was great. And I was like, I watched the first one and that can't possibly be true. I've seen some scenes from it that look kind of cool. I guess the question is, is it more interesting to do... You know, like Indiana Jones 4 or something like that. Or do we still uh, have movie deaths? Uh, Percy Jackson uh, at some point. Yeah, Percy Jackson's coming up, but that show is coming up. What were the new ones from the last March thing? I, one person got back to us and one did not. Who yes. was the one so, that hey, got back like, to us? If, who's the person from the women's bracket who should contact us? It was such an embarrassing name. I can't remember what it was, but that person. You know who you are. I don't remember what the one they it chose was, was. It was Daisy May Smegma, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, can't if that's you, remember that. If that's you and, you and you're like, oh, I didn't realize I won, then hey, you can tell us to do a movie. Yeah. And then, but who won the, the... Oh, man. We were given a movie to do from the men's bracket. Yeah, I remember it, too. Like, I remember... I'm sure I could find it on... Twitter DMs or something. Let me do a real quick search. Here's my here's my uh, case for Extraction 2. We did the first one. We had a whole prediction thing on like how the second one would, would turn out. Could like go back and revisit our predictions and I don't know. Just like, it's another Hemsworth vehicle. Why not? These stupid ass movies. We're, we're, we're so good for these. I mean, our audience would love it. I'm not completely against it. We could always put like, out a poll. We yeah. do that sometimes. Yeah, I don't know. Figure out what this movie dead is. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll see what people say. We'll give it a day or two. Tell us Maybe what you think, listeners. Feelings. Yeah, let us know. And it'd be shunned by our uh, uh, just uh, us ignoring you. Yeah. 
Um, Our silence but, will be deafening. But mm-hmm. plug wise, DJ, do you have anything to plug for the fine people? Yeah, roses and rejections. Uh, Bachelorette starts next week. I can't believe it. We'll see how it goes. Aww. Can't wait. Is it bad? Is this the one you're quitting if it's bad? Yeah, I'm going to quit if it's bad. Nice. <laughs> Not like nice, but like interesting. Yeah, we'll see I'm how curious. it goes. We'll see if I stick Stakes with that. Stakes have never been higher. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Diggins, what about you? Anything to plug? Uh, the Indiegogo campaign for Ballads of the Distant Reaches is still ongoing. Uh, it's still got a decent amount to go to hit its goal. So, hey, if you like the stories they've been putting out, or if you like when I get money, you should, uh, go check that out and maybe give them a back. Uh, you know, there's going to be like a, if it meets its goal, there's going to be like a print magazine. There's going to be more long form stories. It's going to be really cool. So go to Indiegogo and search for, uh, Ballads of the Distant Reaches. Uh, what about you, Nando? Anything to plug? Uh, I just put out a video on uh, Nebula Today uh, that is the fan casting the first four members of the Authority, which by first four, I mean Jenny Sparks, team's first leader, Midnight or Apollo, the team's highest profile characters, and then Jack Hawksmore, the second leader of the team. Um, I'm going to do a second one with the rest of them. But this one is on Nebula Now, and that is what it is, like, you can watch that now. Uh, and then my who should direct the first bat or the first Jesus the first MCU X Men movie. Who should direct the first MCU Batman movie though? I'm wondering. <laughs> um, who should direct the first MCU X Men movie video will be on YouTube probably tomorrow as of recording this. So it might be the day that you're listening to this if you listen to it the first day. So yeah, those are uh, those are my two plugs. Um, and uh, next week we will see. You let us know. Until then. I've been in Andovi Movies on Twitter. I'm at Zippy by Day. I'm at This is an Odd Name. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Love you.